Hello! Welcome back to Dress to Quest. I'm Nathan, I'm the DM here, and uh, yeah, we are in actual play D&D livestream with uh, emphasis on cosplay. Um, you'll see our cast here in a minute, and they'll all have their amazing costumes as well. Um, we are playing in the Ghost of Saltmarsh setting. We're at level 8 at the moment, and we're about to uh, get into some stuff here. Um, real quick, before I send this over to our cast, uh, those of you that have been sticking with us, uh, you will notice we have a much smaller cast this evening. Um, we just recently had one of our cast members um, bow out, and her character may be coming back later at some point for some like smaller episodes. Um, and we are missing another cast member who unfortunately couldn't make it tonight. And So yeah, it's just going to be the four of us tonight. Here's the rest of the cast. Uh, and let's do some player intros. Let's start off with Chris. Good evening, everyone. I play, uh, I'm Chris, and I play Ayize Marley, human Tremetian wizard. <laughs> and I want my lobster back. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, yes. Uh, next up, we have Eric. Hey, guys, I'm Eric Wahlberg. I've been a... Um, Regular here since the beginning, but I'm playing a new character today named Glum. Indeed, uh, and we're I'm excited to meet Glum at some point. Uh, and last but not least, we have Space. Hey guys, I'm Space, and I play Aspen, the Heartbreaker, apparently. <laughs> oh man, yes, that was that was great. Um, all right, well, with the player intros out of the way, let's do a quick recap here and jump right back into this. So, uh, last we left off, our heroes had just uncovered the plot of the Zentarum within Saltmarsh, tracked down the assassin that was leading the entire thing, Scarin, Wave Chaser, who was the butler of Anders Solmore, one of the council members. Um, exposing the conspiracy, uh, Anders unfortunately got wrapped up in all of it, an unknowing victim to the Zentarum's machinations, and Anders has been put under house arrest while the rest of the council tries to solve what to do um, after uncovering this conspiracy. Meanwhile, there was a great celebration that took place that evening at Galen Primewater's Manor. Um, in celebration of the recent defeat of the Sahawagan threat south of Saltmarsh that our heroes had a great hand in. Uh, upon going to the party, there was some dates that uh, were picked up. There was some hearts broken. There was maybe some hearts won and then broken. Um, and yeah, all, 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 overall a good time. Uh, but the final thing that you decided to do was uh, take... Keledek, the town wizard who you suspect may have been behind some of the Zentarum conspiracy, but you had no uh, firm proof of it yet. You, Aspen, uh, seduced him and led him off to uh, a remote part of town where the rest of the party was waiting, and you ambushed him, um, and using intimidation and spells, you got a confession out of him, and he revealed he was not involved with the Zentarum. He did, in fact, supply Scarin with the poison that was used to uh, kill Eleander, but it seemed that Scarin was blackmailing Keledek, and Keledek didn't really ask any questions as to why he needed poison. He just didn't want... Whatever, whatever Scarin had on him, he didn't want that getting out. Um, you did agree to let him go after this, and he did seem very heartbroken with the fact that Aspen's uh, apparent affection and attention was all fake. Uh, and he moped away and floated off into the night as it was revealed that he was a very small gnome using an illusion to look like a seven foot tall man. Uh, as he floated off to his tower, you all gathered up and bedded down for a long rest as Aize went to uh, go off with his date had a lovely evening, and then uh, as you were getting ready to kind of wrap up the evening in its entirety, she uh, was asking you questions about Shern the Lobster that knows the location of the apparatus of Qualish. 
Um, and as she was kind of playing with the lobster, she looked down at the lobster and said, uh, would you like to go with me somewhere, little friend? And then looked at you, Aize, and said, I'm so sorry for this. It's just business. Uh, and before she teleported away, she said, I, uh, yes, there it is. Uh, she said, honestly, Aize, I do really like you. And if you still like me after all this is done, look me up in Thornhold. And she teleported away with Shern in tow. The final thing that happened was Volric the Grim and Chenyar the Cleric uh, left to go and investigate rumblings of Thera's Dune off in the ocean while the rest of the party are here in Saltmarsh getting ready to perhaps track down Skarin and and close out that loop. So, with all of that out of the way, <clears throat> let's turn it over to our players. Uh, I'm gonna switch us away from Eric for now, as he Wait, is, what? He is not here! Wait, uh, <laughs> you bastard. I know, goodbye! Ah. Uh, so, um, <clears throat> so, I use a Aspen, uh, <clears throat> As the early morning light comes over Salt Marsh, you both of you in your kind of various parts of, of uh, Salt Marsh. Actually, I'm going to start with Aize. Um, Aize, so we'll say that that you know that happened very very early morning, like late late right evening. Um, so the sun had not quite come out yet, and you are left alone in uh, <laughs> Captain Zendros's bedroom. Uh, which is uh, kind of partitioned away from the shop itself. Um, what do you do? I get up. Uh huh. Do a prestidigitation cantrip to clean up. Uh huh. I summon archive. Oh yes. The book flutters. To Don't life. write any of that down. And, uh, uh, right. I. I mean, I was doing my best not to listen or pay attention. I. Uh, what. What happened exactly? That tiefling temptress seduced me and absconded with my lobster. Oh, no! So, well, uh, we should probably uh, report this to the library right away, yes? How are we going to do that? <laughs> right. She was the one who I gave my reports to. <laughs> Good point, Aize. I don't know. I wonder if she even gave them the reports. That's the question. First thing first, we search the place. <laughs> okay, uh, yeah, go for it. Go ahead and make an investigation roll as you start searching the place. I mean, she told us where she's going, but that's odd. If that is actually where she's going. Uh, it, it, yes, it does seem a bit odd. Uh, 13, okay. Um, you go through the bedroom here. You don't find anything that, like, indicates... Uh, that, that it implicates her. Um, you don't find anything suspicious. Everything seems above board. You go through the shop itself and search through there. Same deal. Um, you do notice, though, that the shop's shelves seem to be suspiciously empty of anything of value. There's still spell components. You planned it! <laughs> <laughs> but there is... Oh, you temptress! <laughs> <laughs> um, but all of the spell components you find are pretty easy common components. Anything of value is... Bat common. guano. Bat. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, just, just tons of bat guano. I'm a... Well, Thornhold. Let's be off archive. Oh, right. Yes, yes. Let's do it. Um, all right. So, uh, I leave. Mm -hmm. Did she at least give me a key? <laughs> um, I mean, you're inside, so you can unlock the door and exit. Yeah, but I want to lock it after me. Oh, how polite. Um, no, she did not leave a key behind. <laughs> Not my problem then. <laughs> <laughs> Close the door. Okay. I mean, we're not savages, but still. <clears throat> and I head to the Diora. Okay. Uh, so, Aize, you retire to the Diora as the sun is rising. Um, and Aspen, uh, as you are waking up. Oh, um, did we? No, you didn't say, get to actually say goodbye to Chenyar. Chenyar and Volric left, right? Like, without, without. Yeah. 
So well, I, I, I did get a, I got a kiss. So I, I think that was as much of a goodbye. Right, but that was anything. that was in the evening, if I remember correctly, right? It, I, it's fine. Yeah. So you. Yeah, just, I, I think. Uh, Aspen, as you were getting up um, to attend the captain's, uh, you know, duties of the day, um, I guess what does that look like? Are you are you getting up in the captain's uh, cabin right now? Yes, I am currently rewriting a, a list of all the new positions that have to be filled, <laughs> and I leave it on the door for I use anything. On the front, <laughs> on the front no, door. Vorik and Shinyar left. I don't know where Shifty is, so I'm just gonna just put random people in these positions. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and I think, um, yeah, I will just wait until Ayuse come back. Okay, yeah. Um, Ayuse, you return, uh, and you can see there is this note. Did you pin the note to his door or to your door? Uh, probably his door. Okay. So Ayuse, as you go back to your room, you see this note pinned to the door and uh, mm -hmm. it seems to it's Haspin's handwriting and there's just a bunch of positions that she has filled out <laughs> it's, oh I do have in like bold italics uh, <laughs> quartermaster I use him <laughs> <laughs> this is a typical example archive that shit rolls downhill <laughs> you know what I'm saying <laughs> oh yes yes of course I walk over to um, the deck and I look up on the um, main deck to see if the captain is there. Sure. Uh, Aspen, would you be up on the main deck? Uh, yeah, I think I will be in the crow's nest, kind of like looking <laughs> out in the direction okay. that Shinyar and Vorik had left. Yeah. So. Okay. So, so Aize, you look to the main deck, don't see Aspen, and then kind of hear some creaking above and look up, and you can see Aspen up there in the crow's nest looking out west. All right. First thing first. Normalcy. What do I normally do first thing in the morning on the ship? Oh, yeah. All right. Uh, I will call the crew over and say, hey, time for water breathing. All right, the crew gathers up and does the uh, daily r ritual of you casting water breathing on them all. Okay, I hit them up with water breathing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then I um, climb up the crow's nest. <laughs> okay, as you're climbing up the crow's nest and the crew kind of scatters, um, you start to hear the uh, continuous sound of work being done to the ship and you see the crew scattering off, going back to their various repairs of the ship. Um, and it looks like repairs are coming underway well. Um, you probably will need a day or two more to fully get the ship up and up to tip top speed. Um, but that kind of starts, that busyness starts up and you make your way up towards Aspen. All right, is there room for two in the crow's nest? Yeah, like just about, just enough. Kind of I'm a little, little cozy. I look up, I said, do you mind? Yeah, no, come on. Um, I wasn't sure if you wanted to be alone. I imagine you're a bit forlorn. A little bit, um, but oh. come on. If you're feeling low, we can do this later. No, 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 no. All I right. have time for you, Aize. Please tell me what's wrong. All right. Um, this... And by the way, can I say, I've never seen you climb anything as, that was really good. I thought you were going to fall a couple of times, but that was really great. Yes, I'm, I'm slowly becoming a sailor. <laughs> but for the heavy okay. lifting, I'm actually quite agile. And uh, But it might take a while for me to get used to the, you know, the whole picking things up that are heavy thing. Um, uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, so um, we have lost our first mate and our um, surgeon, our ship's physician, and um, that... Ship's position is not a problem. We actually have a replacement for her. Okay. And, um, well, you can't really replace Chenyar, but we have someone who can sort of sub for her. And, yeah. um, one moment. Sorry, one sec. Uh, Do you mean Eloise? Eloise, yes. I believe Eloise is uh, competent enough um, priestess 
and healer that uh, she'll do for our, our needs. Okay. That's right, Eloise. Um, <clears throat> Oceanus is already our um, weapons master. Uh, so uh, let's get um, Gog. Gog, that's his name, right? With the big hat? Or is it yes. Cog? Gog. I don't remember. Gog, okay. I think he, I mean, he's been watching Volric plenty enough, so I think he will make a great substitution for the time being. I would re recommend that um, we make Gog the bosun for now and not first mate. Okay. And, I mean... Um, our, oh no, sorry. Yeah, Oceanus is already the bosun. Okay, all right. Gog is first mate. Well, we'll tell him that it's temporary. You tell him, not me. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, I'll take it better from you. <clears throat> I'm not going to honey coat it. You know? Okay. You you? <laughs> I do not. <laughs> Thank you. You know, I, I try. Um, yeah. But yeah, um, I mean, everything went according to plan. I, I really want to apologize to Keladek, actually. I felt really bad. Well, we can do that tonight when we go visit him. I don't think I don't think he wants me. All right, I will explain to him when I visit him, but I'll probably balls it up because I'm not a charming person. But I'll try. Okay. <laughs> yeah, speaking of charming, ah, you know, you know Captain Zendros. Yeah. Oh, yeah. She was so lovely. We. I saw that you two went. Oh, mm. Okay. Is that like your your new girlfriend or something? About that. She seemed really interested in Sherm, which is what I was planning on doing as kind of a way to break the ice. And let me tell you, the ice was broken last night. And, okay. But, <laughs> um, well, yeah, I'll just tell you that the tiefling temptress seduced me and absconded with my lobster. Oh, what? Wait, I'm sorry. Are you saying you got played last night? Yes, I was played. I was deceived. You? Yes. I didn't. I just like it. I just look around at like all the 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 not smart people on my on the deck, and I'm just like, how? I say, you're usually like really good at like figuring these things out. Look, you've always, I. I'll be honest with you. The first time I met you, I figured, oh, this person has so many secrets. I mean, uh, talk about, you know, bones in the graveyard. It's a wonder that, you know, like a femur doesn't fall out of her mouth when she opens it. But you have been very open and told me everything about you. And I feel somewhat embarrassed because you don't know everything about me. Okay. So I'm, and you remember what I said? A secret is something that is kept between two people. Mm -hmm. So if I tell you something, you have to keep it secret. I just look around at uh, the two of us in the crow's nest. Yeah, this is a good place to this. <laughs> Who am I going to tell? Ayuda, you can count on me. I don't tell secrets. All right. So, you know the Termitian Library, of which I'm a no. librarian? Absolutely not. Oh, okay. Well, I'm a librarian for the Termitian Library. It's not just something I say. Um, it's also um, a front for the Termitian Secret Service. So, so you're a spy? Yes. <laughs> wow. I. And Sendros is my contact in Saltmarsh. She was also a librarian and a spy. <laughs> so you got burned by your own contact. Yes. Which makes me suspect that she's a double agent or someone turned her. Well, okay. Uh, who do you think turned her if she, you know? I have no idea, but it all involves Sherm. Uh, you see, I've been passing on information to the library of Termish through her. And okay. it makes me worried because she was also my contact here, and I don't know if she passed on the information, including everything that we've done 
and everything about Sherm. And Sherm knows the location of the apparatus of Qualish on the ocean floor. Besides being an, an adorable little lobster creature, he, he is valuable in that regard. And I was thinking of leaving him with her while we're, you know, if we have to sail away elsewhere so that she could keep him safe. So she steals him. She thought that was really amusing, by the way. <laughs> and, um, and she told me she's gone to, you know, if, you know, if I can let bygones be bygones, look me up in Thornhold, which is coincidentally where we're going to, you know, also where I'm scaring it, so. Okay, first, only I can steal Sharon, so she has to go. Oh, we have right. to find her. Uh, <laughs> secondly, did she at least take his pot? Or did she just like grab him and just, you know. She grabbed him. She didn't take his pot. She has no idea how to take care of him. Yo, <laughs> she is a monster. I don't like her at all. And a third thing, she owes me spell components. <laughs> how does she just leave like that? I I literally ordered diamonds from her. Did you pay up front? <laughs> of course not. Oh, <laughs> don't worry works. about it. She took all the diamonds with her. Uh, I already searched uh, the merchants of Joaquin. Anything of value is gone. All that's left is bat guano and fur trimmings. So, um... Okay, well, Thornhill, let's, um... I guess that's where we're going. Yes, so the ship's gonna be repaired in a day and a half. Uh, regarding this... Um... Shifty is, in, is, you know, incognito or gone who knows where. Uh, he's probably working with the guild right now. I think that's something he told me. I, I was, it was a lot going on the last couple of days, you know. What I'm saying is we're desperately in need of a damage magnet. Yes. Or at least somebody who can run in and, you know, beat the crap out of people. I mean, you and I are casters. That's true. I can summon some damage magnets, but they're nowhere near as durable as Volric was. And with Shinyar gone, it's, uh, trying to keep people alive is going to be a lot harder, so... Well, we're short of burglar and um, basically a basher. <laughs> well, I'm sure, I'm sure we can find someone here. We have a day and a half, right? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to let the crew know that we're looking for um, quality people uh, with regard to... Let me think. Probably a, a combat specialist who is tough. But I don't know how to advertise for a thief, a, a burglar. I, I, I mean, you just don't do that. <laughs> I mean, looking for a thief. What are you, an idiot? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. I, I they agree. Advertise yeah. and say hi, and they don't say hello. I'm a thief. No. <laughs> well, um, maybe we just do one at a time. So. Right, right. I'll let the crew know that we're looking for somebody, and we just gave them a. Well, you just gave them a nice fat bonus, so that might give them incentive, other people incentive to join the Diora. Right. Well, I need to go drop this gold off to uh, Larissa at the Empty Net. If you want to have breakfast there, I think we can. Um, I'll catch up with you. I'm gonna see to the crew stuff first. Okay, just you know, you know where to find me if you need me. All right, I'll tell Eloise that uh, the captain wants a word with her, and you can tell her that she's now the, you know, the new ship's um, healer. And I'll tell um, Gog also that uh, you should have a word with you when you return. I mean, all right? Yeah. Meanwhile, I'll, actually, adjust, the, I'll adjust the books so that they're on there. Okay. Um, actually, can I uh, look around to see if I... Uh, is Gog on the deck right now? Uh, yeah, you can see Gog is uh, up by the bow of the ship currently um hoisting some big heavy boards over his shoulder and putting them down on the deck and you can see others kind of with ropes around on down the side and they're they're doing a patchwork right now um okay so i think uh i just looked at you today you mind if i do this right now oh not at all 
Okay, I cast. I just don't want to do it myself. <laughs> <laughs> I cast. Uh, I cast uh, thaumaturgy, and I'm just like, Gog, put that down. Uh, you are the new first mate, but it's only temporary. <laughs> Uh, Gog, the big kind of half orc, um, sort of uh, jolts a little with the loud sound of thaumaturgy, and the boards kind of clatter to the deck. <laughs> he turns and looks at you, and as you say that, he sort of cocks his head. What? <laughs> <laughs> and you see heads pop up from over the edge of the boat of um, Giggly, Willoughby and Maxwell, the small gnome, there's the Willoughby, the young teenager, and Maxwell, this like half elf, almost uh, emo style black hair, kind of down to the side, and they're all like looking over the edge at you. Uh, I'm the, I'm the first mate. Yep, you can go get your hat. Yep. Right, yeah, the hat. Um. Remember, temporary. Right, yeah, well. The hat kind of blew away. Gog. I, I'm sorry. Things were really intense with that vampire, and the winds were crazy, and uh, there was a lot of rocking, and the... Poof, uh, I'm sorry. It's, it's okay. It's okay, Gog. Um, Does just, this mean I can still be first mate without the hat? Yes, you can. Without the hat, you can still be first mate. Uh, wait, I uh, call down. Yeah. Three cheers for Gog! <laughs> and everybody starts to cheer, and he kind of looks around sheepishly, looks back up at you. I forget you're up on the crow's nest. Looks up at you at the crow's nest. Uh, is Volrith going to be mad? Uh, d- don't worry about him. L- leave that to us. We'll worry about Volrith. Uh, all right, Captain. Uh, he kind of nervously looks back at the three individuals, uh, Giggly, Maxwell, and Willoughby, who are looking at him from over the edge, and kind of goes... All right, you heard her. Uh, back to work. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go over here now and do first mate stuff. He kind of turns and walks up to the main deck uh, and sort of like awkwardly just like twirling the wheel of the ship. Oh no. Uh, okay, so with uh, with new with new crew assignments um, assigned, um, and you get all of your kind of morning chores taken care of. Um, Aspen, you head to the empty net uh, to have breakfast, and you're paying. You're you're putting another payment in for the. Uh, uh, was it the, what did you? Was it for the wyvern poison? It was. It was. It was. Yeah, I, that's right. I had eight hundred. It was eight hundred gold left in it, okay. and I have a pouch of eight hundred gold okay. in my inventory. There you go. Okay, so uh, Larissa clasps the pouch from you in her office and looks at you and says, Oh, Aspen, I am so thankful for this. How did that go, by the way, with the wyvern poison? Did you find some good use for it? It went terrible. (laughs) Really? (laughs) So, I think you might want to sit down for this conversation. Okay, yeah, she sits down. So you're going to be upset with me, and I understand that, okay? I did something that betrayed your trust, and uh, I apologize. Um, But my friends and I, we needed this connection with uh, Keladact, who has sent his little imp, uh, Vakun, here to spy on everything that we have, or everything that you have in the sub-basement of here. Um, And I know you heard about uh, Eleander being murdered. Yes? Yes. So, yes, the Wyvern poison was used to kill Eleander by the butler Scarin of um, uh, Anders Butler, so it's it's a whole mess right now, and I just want to express how sorry I am, and it will never happen again. And I'm just kind of like, I'm just kind of like, um. Does anyone know like, that you are connected to this poison? Uh, no one but Kelidet. 
Well, uh, well, my friends, I, I did tell them, but they're not going to say anything. And no one knows that we got it from you. Um, Keladak was being blackmailed by Scarin, Scarin though. This is a lot to ask them. It is, and like I said, I understand if you're upset, and you I have every right. Very upset. I am um, honestly, I'm, I'm hurt that you would do this. You would do this to me. You wouldn't come to me first. You wouldn't tell me any of this. After everything that we've been through, everything I've done. I'm shocked, Aspen. This is, this could be, this could be the end of all of this. If this were to get out, if this would be connected to me, if Kaladedekt was to go forward to the council, if any of this was to link back to me, all of this could be shut down. I could lose everything. Everything that I've spent my entire life building here in Saltmarsh could be ruined because of one choice that you made. Okay. Please, yeah. please you, explain you... to me. Explain to me why you did this. Why was this so important? You put so much at risk, Aspen. You put our relationship at risk. You've put my business at risk. You've put my entire life at risk, Aspen. Why did you do this? <clears throat> because I... You might not understand this, but... My friends and I were going off to a war that we thought we wouldn't be able to win. And the only person in town powerful enough to even supply us with things, the things that we needed was Keladact. And it, it wasn't personal. I would never lie to you. I think this is the first time I've ever lied to you. And it's been eating me up for quite a while honestly i wanted to tell you from the be from the beginning but color deck said uh that if i did like he wouldn't help us and we needed that help make a persuasion roll Twenty six. All right. I'm going to need some time. I'm going to need some time to myself. And I'm going to need you to take some time off away from here. But we will talk later. I understand. And if you forgive me, and there's a way I can earn your trust back, please just tell me and I'll do anything. I don't want to lose what we have. Neither do I. But I am... What you've done, what you've told me, really hurt Aspen. And... Oh. I will take some time to think on this. I need to okay. process. I need to process this first. I uh, okay. I will leave. I'll be out of your hair, and I will just like turn around. Um, I probably will. Does she have a, a window in her office? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I will probably just misty step through the window and make my way to uh back to the diora okay so with a <laughs> you disappear outside the window and exit the now empty office as uh as madame larissa sort of slumps down back in her chair and kind of puts her head in her hands um after this revelation uh Ayize, did you have anything 
that you were going to be doing today. Um, otherwise, yeah. Anything oh, else? Oh, no. <clears throat> Call the crew over, say, congratulations, Gog. Uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> and a new hat. All right. Oh, 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 oh is that? A, okay. We're looking for a door kicker, a real hard, tough son of a gun. <laughs> uh, we can't truly replace Volric, but we need someone as as gnarly and as hard as him. All right, a, a real warrior. Bigger the better. Someone massive. Huge. <laughs> <laughs> the whole the whole crew uh, nods and I'm agrees. I'm kidding. I don't say that. Yeah. <laughs> they all they all uh, they all um, nod, and there's kind of talk amongst the crew, and you, the various members step forward and um, say that they'll go and ask around town and reach out to their contacts um, as that kind of gets going while repairs <laughs> continue. And the good news is we're still working on a flag. And uh, we're working on, I'm working the captain to see if we can get some uniforms, but, you know, she's a little bit uh, <laughs> resistant to that. But uh, before we head out, we are going to get some uh, armorers up on the ship and get you all properly kitted out with better gear. Uh, everyone, everyone seems pretty delighted by that. Um, Gog kind of nods and goes, uh, yeah, and um, kind of leans down to you. What do, what do I do? What do you need me to do? Oh, um, look imposing. Okay. Make sure all of the ship stuff look, gets done correctly. Okay. And um, boost everyone's morale by telling them they're doing a good job if they're doing a good job. If they're doing, okay. Oh, I can do that. If they're not, and they're slacking off, tell them to stop slacking off. All right. Uh, and he straightens up and goes, you're all doing a great job and don't slack off. All right. Um, Temporary. <laughs> and he starts to walk around and, and uh, observe what everyone is doing. Uh, all right. So as uh, the day goes on, um, eventually you are called uh, to the council hall. Those of you that are left, um, Shifty joins as well as you all kind of gather up in uh, Ida's office once more. The guards, you notice, are doubled from what they normally are. Um, Anders is missing from this meeting, so it is just Ida, Monastrad, and Galen. Um, Galen is kind of rubbing his temples, looking very uh, hungover, um, as you all go into the office. And you can see that on Ida's uh, desk, her big, um, like, big wooden desk, there's multiple pieces of paper, and you can see right in the middle there's a big pile of all of the evidence that was essentially gathered from Skarin's lair. Um, and one document in particular she has opened is uh, what looks to be a letter that has been torn open and she's currently looking at this piece of paper as you all are ushered in by the guards. Um, the door closes behind you and she looks up uh, and says, Ah, thank you for uh, coming here to join us. I uh, wanted to present this rest of this evidence to you all and I found this interesting letter here in particular. I, reading through it seems to be a relatively generic business letter, but something seemed off about it, and I suspect there may be some sort of code happening within here. I'm uh, specifically hoping, ah, yeah, Shifty, perhaps you could take a look, and she will flip the letter towards Shifty, who scuttles over and starts to uh, pour over it. Um, we don't have Josh here, but I believe I have his character sheet. Um, or Aspen, do you have access to his character sheet? I believe we gave, I gave you a, uh, access to it for one of the times that Shifty was out. If you don't, I have it right uh, Yeah, I do. Uh, I do. It's loading right now. Got it, okay. Yes. Do you mind rolling... Um, I mean, this would be an investigation check for me for Shifty. Investigation? Can I give him guidance? Yes, you can. Yeah. Okay. Uh, did it roll? Oh, oh, that's really bad. <laughs> oh, he got a 10. He got a 10. Okay. Uh, as he's pouring over it, he kind of looks up and goes, Ah, yeah, I mean... This is 
clearly coded, uh, but there's a lot of stuff being used here that is unfor... Hmm. Uh, there's a couple things I notice, um, I notice here. It sounds like, uh, as we've all been alluding to, uh, this letter is to uh, some contacts named uh, Nemo in, uh, in Thornhold. Um, it seems that he was getting ready to uh, do a trip down there for, it says, some sort of business arrangement, but I don't know what this means exactly, what exactly this is referring to here when it's talking about shipments of rum. Um, that's probably something more specific. I just don't know what that is for, uh, you know, the thieves can't. Uh, but yeah, it seems like a pretty good indication that he has some contact in Thornhall. Um, this Nemo person kind of folds the letter up and kind of sh hands a little shaky, like, slides <coughs> back onto the table and then shuffles back to join you all. Well, uh, what do you want us to do, do exactly? Do you want us to go up the Scarin and try to bring him him back or like honestly yes if you would be willing to do this for you, for us um i do notice that chenyar and volric aren't here are they busy right now uh yes as you can see half of my my crew is gone so uh if you have anyone who is looking for work and is available we would gladly take them yeah i mean we can we can look around, but we're pretty much using all the resources we have at our disposal right now um, with everything that's gone down, and most of our best soldiers are on leave recovering from everything that happened with the Sahawagan, so... Um, but we'll keep our eyes and ears peeled. But would you be willing to, to follow up this lead for us? Track down this scare, and it would... I think it would really help put minds at rest if we could apprehend him. Uh, yes. Um, yes, we will. All right. We can, of course, compensate you as we have in the past. Okay. Uh, how much? Well, uh, you've kind of been <laughs> doing a lot for us, and, you know, we're... We don't have infinite funds, uh, but for something like this, if you can bring them in, I'd say 6,000 gold for you and your crew. Oh, you know, Scarin is quite the uh, dangerous person, and it's only I use a myself. I mean, look at it, I, I use a, I use a, hold your arm up. <laughs> Uh, you hear a chuckle come from Monastrad, the uh, dwarven woman there. She kind of looks and smirks. Uh, I, I mean, look, this is what we have available. This is what we can offer you. And honestly, funds are going to be pretty tight here once we resolve everything with the mess that Skarin and Anders have left behind. I hope you understand. I looked at Yuse. Like, I just kind of like signal to, to like um, telepathically uh, link with me. <laughs> okay, I do. She taps her a uh, temple. <laughs> yeah. Do we understand? <laughs> do, we, do we understand? I'm just like, are you like, do we understand? Is that okay with, with us? Um. I'm getting my lobster back, all I right? Mean, that's all I know. <laughs> and, um, no, 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 hold on. That's okay, all right, we'll go 6,000. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, okay, I'll continue. Okay, uh, I, I, I'll say <laughs> The delay is pretty bad. <laughs> yeah, we're getting a, a lag here. <laughs> yeah, a big, big time lag, yeah, that's okay. I don't want to interrupt you. 
I'm going to talk now. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Um, I believe we have to go to Thornhold regardless, and hopefully we can pick up some extra people on the way. Either that, or we put Gog in a suit of armor. No, we are not doing that. Okay, I'm just saying, desperate times require desperate measures. We are not that desperate. I can actually, well, I can't summon an Azer. But even so. All right. Well, just ask them, you know, you're better at this, like I said. Ask them, hey, you happen to know any good head thumpers? I think I did, but they, they said everyone is uh, either out already right. or... Um, we can pick up someone about... in Thornhold then? I don't know. Yeah, we'll have to. It is what um, it and is. I just <laughs> And I just turned back to, um, who was I speaking to? Ida? Ida, yeah. Um, one of the council um, members. Seeing as you, the town is low on funds, I, we will accept that. Um, do you have any other evidence that we can take with us to study over? Uh, well, you're welcome to take all of this. And you see like a series of maps. Um, what else would you add? Um, there would have been, you know, various uh, bottles of poison uh, available there as well, um, and that letter. Um, and the maps seem to be local maps of the region. Um, there's a, a kind of a wider map that shows all the way down to about Waterdeep uh, as far as south and then as far north as Neverwinter. Um, and then there are some local regional maps, some of Saltmarsh, some of, of Thornhold, um, there's one that actually of the uh, Mirror of Dead Men, which is the big marsh that actually extends out from Salt Marsh that Salt Marsh is uh, built upon, um, as well as a regional map of Leylon, which is the town directly um, east of Salt Marsh. Okay. Well, uh, if that's all, then I guess we will prepare to get going. All right. Uh, thanks for this. And uh, if you are going to be heading down to Thornhold, uh, be careful. It's a tough place. And uh, Manasrad, the dwarf, kind of leans back and sort of laughs. <laughs> Man, that place has really gone to shit. It's really sad to see it. Uh, you know what they call it nowadays? She looks over the two of you. No. They call it the styes. You know, those irritations you get on your eye sometimes. <laughs> well, uh... Okay. Just look out for yourself, and uh, maybe if you have some way to cover up your mouth while you're there. The air there is foul, I'll tell you what. Um, okay. And uh, Galen kind of sort of leans up, rubbing his head. Yeah, it's uh, not a great place, but hey, there's some good times to be had in the... <laughs> Some of the taverns there, I'll tell you what, uh, anything goes. <laughs> uh, all right, I, are we done with this? I would like to get back home and tend to business. Uh, and everybody kind of looks over and then looks back to you. Ida, well, if there's nothing else, then yeah, you're welcome to leave. And thank you again. We'll uh, compensate you if you can bring Scarin back. Dead or alive, really. Okay. Um, and I just, yeah, okay, well, uh, I, I would like to pull, uh, Galen aside, um, once everyone has cleared, um, cleared out the room. All right, um, as you- Before he, he disappears. Sure. Uh, as you're doing that, Ida does, uh, kind of, uh, hold her hand up and say, As a favor to the kid, if he can bring Scarin back alive, I think we would <clears throat> appreciate that. That kid has been through a lot. Um, yeah. And uh, as everybody starts to depart, Aspen, you're able to pull Galen aside kind of in the hallway as everybody's filing past you. Um, he kind of goes, Yes, Aspen, uh, what, what can I do for you? Uh, I will message him, and I will ask him if he has anything to do with the rum uh, situation in that letter to Nemo. Right. 
Uh, no, I, I honestly don't. Um, I don't know what that is about. I have a feeling that Scarin was trying to find some way to cut me out, uh, you know, get in whatever contacts he can. That, yeah, I, it's not mine. Okay. Alright then, well, uh, you have a good day, sir, and I will but, just... Wait, 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 before fine, you... Fine, I use it. Before you go, before uh, you go. I yes. Re- I, I really must know. How was Keladek? I mean, we all saw you with him. I, and that's... <laughs> we've, we've, we've seen glimpses of him in the years he's been here, but never just out in public like that. That was, that was remarkable. How was it? And we saw you kiss him. Oh my, everyone's talking about it. Everyone, everyone. I'm sure they are in this small, small town. Um, Galen, uh, I hope you know the saying, a lady never kisses and tells. I'm not going to tell you anything. Oh, you're no fun. Fine. I'm plenty of fun. All right, fine. Well, if, if, if you feel like talking about it, come mm-hmm. by my place. I will treat you to uh, whatever you want. Uh, I mean, within reason. Some, some fine, fine goods, some food, some, some alcohol, whatever it is that I can provide. I would love, love to know the details. Okay, yeah, I will keep that in mind. You know, maybe after this whole scaring business, you know, it's quite a mess. <clears throat> so um, I have to be off. I have a ship to attend to. Oh. And people to find. I just had a thought. You're looking for someone, right? Uh, knock to knock heads, right? A uh, tough person. Um, yes. You might. I met the most fascinating woman last night. Beautiful. This half elven woman. Uh, I totally know her name. I can tell you what she looks I'm like. I'm sure you. I'm, sh- I'm sure you do. She's, you Did would, you? You wouldn't miss her. She's. She. She might be leaving this morning, but if you hurry, you might be able to catch her. Uh, she's half elven, platinum blonde hair, short hair, has a scar on one side, um, mm. beautiful dark leather armor. She might be something you're looking for, but I know that she's heading south to Baldur's Gate for a job, so she's probably not going to do it for free. If, but just wanted to throw that. All right. Uh, please okay. stop by if if you again details details. Then he goes I, and 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 leaves. Okay, I quickly try to find my way back to uh, Aize, wherever he is. Yeah, you. I'm right there. Up. Yep, you guys meet up. Oh, you know prestigitation. <laughs> I don't. Oh, okay. You want me to clean you off after talking to him? <laughs> yes, I always feel so dirty. All right, just checking. I didn't want to impose. Thank you. Um, <laughs> he says that maybe we can find uh, this dark hair, blonde hair, uh, elven girl, half elven girl. Galen She's recommended on her, her way to. Yes, which is quite well, weird. I have to two me. magic words for that, and I can't say that on the say them on the stream. <laughs> but uh... <laughs> but uh, let's just say the first word. Nah, I'm not gonna go there, but. <laughs> um, how about no? <laughs> well, I mean, I, I know we're looking for someone, and she, he said that uh, she would do it for a price. But uh, if you don't think that's I wise, I'm not I agree working with, with anyone that Galen recommends, and I don't think you should. Well, I mean, Galen did. <laughs> I, I was a part of. I believe four days ago we were plotting to assassinate him. <laughs> you got me there. <laughs> um, oh, sir, you convinced me to kill him. <laughs> now you want to take job recommendations from him? Hey, All what right, can I say? You, your call. You're the captain. Well, let's let's I just say. go check her out. We, let's just check her out. I mean, she might be something. She might not be. Maybe, but um, I do have an appointment with Keladek. He's going to give me his uh, summoning stone. Oh, yeah, that's right. Uh, we need that. 
All right, you do that. I will go find this girl. And we'll meet back at the Diora, I'm pretty sure. So has it been a day already? Uh, has the repairs been done? Um, so as you leaving the council hall, um, it's, it's about probably 11 o'clock in the morning right now um, of this first day. So you still have the whole day before uh, the ship is ready. Um, but we can accelerate forward at any point. That's not a problem. Um, and in fact, I would just like to check in really quick. Um, are there any last things you want to uh, address before we s depart and head south? Uh, the only thing is getting the stone from Keladek. Okay. Um, that's it for Aizek. Okay. And then getting on the ship and heading for Thornhold. That's it. Cool. And uh, Aspen? I guess uh, checking out this Elven girl. Okay. Um, for that, I will... Um, before we go. Sure. For that, I will need you to roll um, investigation or perception. Your choice. Didn't you already meet her? Oh, no. That was Chinyar. Uh, that was Chinyar. No, that was Chinyar. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to do perception. I have a same. A 19, okay. 19. Uh, yeah, you managed to, just after leaving the council hall, you can see there is, um, yeah, there's, uh, d down by the harbor, there's a ship that's getting loaded up and kind of waiting off to the side you can see a couple of individuals like a smattering of folk that are have all their gear and travel gear with them like they're getting ready to get on board this ship once it's ready to depart um and one of them is a half elven woman uh she has <clears throat> let me see here Uh, yeah, you see this half-elven woman. She has um, short platinum blonde hair, uh, golden eyes, and a nasty scar that runs down her right cheek to her jawline. Um, and she's wearing studded leather armor. Uh, and she's currently resting on top of barrel, kind of um, leaning on it, and just slowly whittling away at a piece of wood that she has in her hand with a small knife. Um, I will cautiously try to get her attention. Okay. Um, yeah, she spots you as you approach and looks up, still whittling, just locking eyes with you. Um, hello, I am Aspen, captain of the Diora, and I was told to come find you by Galen. We need... We need someone to uh, help us find uh, a certain someone. And he said that you were quite good at your job. I am. Don't do it for free though. Okay. How much are you talking? I'm surprised that your uh, friend, Chenya, hasn't told you. She asked me the same thing last night. I'd be willing to drop my current job for about 1,500 gold. Hmm. Well, the city is paying us. And if you want, the money can come out of that. But 1,500 gold I don't have right now. Well, I would need at least half up front. I just want to insight check her. Yeah, go for it. I don't like that she mentioned Shinyar. <laughs> I don't like that at all. <laughs> 15? Uh, 15, okay. Um, sorry. A uh, 15. Uh, <clears throat> she, she seems very interested and there's kind of like this excitement that rises behind her eyes. Um, yeah, I 
I don't know. She she seems very keen to uh, to join you. Like there's this like kind of excitement you can't help but notice um, as her eyes kind of get wide, and then she seems to be trying to like contain it, if that makes sense. It's very very subtle, but um, like you 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 almost didn't notice it. It was like a couple of micro expressions that burbled up in the initial moments as you approached, and then as you asked about her joining. Okay, I'll tell you what, I'll give you 500 gold now, and we will discuss the rest on my ship. 500 gold. That's not quite half, but, uh, where are you Listen, headed? Listen, I, we are going to Thornfold. Perfect, I'm going to Baldur's Gate. So why don't I join your ship then for 500 gold? Um, we can discuss along the way. And if the deal doesn't seem like it's going to work out, then uh, I'll give you your gold back and I'll be on my way continuing south to Baldur's Gate. What is the job, by the way? We are uh, looking for someone. All right. Are you going to uh, give me more th- details she- than that? I have a question, Ethan. Yeah. Does she look like she's from around here? Like she have I ever seen this girl before? Has she like is she a salt marsh native? No, you've never seen her before. Okay. Um Well, uh, I can't give you more details until you agree to the job, but uh this is a town problem and I don't like discussing details with right. outsiders. Great. Let's uh let's go then. Where's your ship? The big one that wall off. Alright. Um so she will scoop up her gear and uh file in behind you and join you at the Diora. Um Ayize, as you head to Caledex, um there's, you know, that kind of anxious waiting period and then eventually the door appears at the base. <laughs> And you are led inside by, by Vakun, eventually going through the strange winding obsidian hallways and then entering into his uh, workshop. Um, and you do see him as he kind of comes out of the shadows. He's just in his gnomish form as he comes toddling over, um, kind of crosses his arms and looks at you. <sighs> Hello, Aize. Hello, Keledek. So... Are you headed to uh, find Skerin then? Yes. And some other council, well, personal business I have to take care of in Thornhold as well. All right. Well, I'd be willing to uh, let you go off with our little project here. But of course, we need to have some sort of arrangement and I need to get a little bit more out of it. I mean, I I want this bastard to be caught and uh, punished, but... Oh, I was just going to make sure he, you know, <laughs> but you want him caught, right? What would be more satisfying for me is if you could bring him back here alive, back into my tower. Uh, Canada, dead man tells no, tell no tales. I mean, what if he mouths off about your secrets before no, no. we bring him? Well, you make sure that he doesn't. You uh, don't let the council know. You tell the council that he was killed or whatever. I'm sure you can hide him. I'm, you have Shifty on your boat. He's a smuggler. I'm sure you can find some way to make sure that nobody knows. Upon... No, not Joaquin. Hang on. Go check my deities. Uh... <laughs> All I'm saying is, I'd be willing to uh, give this to you if you promise, and uh, I'll have the coon draft up a contract here to make sure it's all kosher, and uh, make sure that you bring them back to me alive. Um, I'm not signing a damn thing that the coon writes up, <laughs> and um. <laughs> All right. Look, nothing personal. I love you, Bakun, but you're a freaking devil. And I am not signing anything. Hey, I mean, uh, 
But Monk. you can't count on me. Nah, I'm sorry, Bacon. It's so cute. Uh, um, <laughs> you can't count on me. Um, all right, I then. swear by no banyan that if it is within my power and means, I will deliver Kelly, deliver him to you. Look, I uh, I don't really have any business with the gods, and I don't put any stock in them. Is there some sort of collateral you can give me? Something that I can hold on to that's precious to you? Oh. I hand him my plus one magic dagger. (laughs) (laughs) I never used it. (laughs) <laughs> he, he, he looks at you and raises an eyebrow really you're a wizard giving me a dagger that's that's the thing that's precious to you fine it's a good try someone else I think would have fallen for it I hand him my wand <laughs> okay okay he looks at it um so I mean if you if he's gonna take your wand then I mean, we don't have to get into all the specifics of it. This could all be for role playing. This is a wand of the war mage plus oh, one. Oh, cool. Okay. Um, he looks at it. Really, you'd be willing to leave this with me? Teladak, I told you I have nothing against you personally. All right. This this all will right. be satisfactory. And he puts it down. By the way, that is collateral. I want it back. Yes, of course. Listen, Naize, the fact that you were able to make sure that no violence occurred last night and I got my boots back, you'll get it back. On my word. No Good. words of gods or anything, my word. Um, and he takes the uh, stone apparatus that you did together, passes it to you, um, and then uh, goes, one moment as well. And he toddles over and is like going through some shelves and then pulls down uh, something from the shelf and goes over and he's holding another what looks to be another polished river stone this one it looks to be made of entirely of obsidian and then he pulls out uh, another one from his pocket so we can keep in touch and passes it to you all right uh, make a away. note archive make a note of this will you please oh yes of course um so you have a sending stone for contacting Keladek, and he will give you the apparatus that you constructed that has the sending stone um, attached to this apparatus that'll point to the uh, the uh, partner of that sending stone pair. All right, um, and with all of that um, kind of wrapped up, Keladek, um, you know, waves you goodbye, unless you had any other final things with him, but you conclude your business with him, you yep. all head to the Diora, um, bed down for the one more evening as repairs are finished. And uh, about late morning next day, the repairs are finally completed. And um, God comes to you, Aspen, as you're all gathered on the deck. Uh, Captain, I, I did a good job telling people they did a good job and telling people not to slack off. And now everything is ready to go. We're ready to set sail if if you are. Uh, I just look over to... I never even got her name. <laughs> um, I, I look for... Oh. No, 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 no. Oh. The Elven Ara- girl. Araleth. <laughs> the half-elven girl. Araleth? Araleth. Okay. Uh, so, you have stayed on my boat free of charge. Um, I think it's only right that, you know, you accompany us. We need you. Well, right. I, I thought that was the plan. I was going to go down to Thornhold with you. We were going to uh, discuss this business arrangement. And then if everything worked out, then perhaps uh, I could do this job for you. I just looked at Aize. And I, I will settle cast message. Mm. And I'm like, I don't trust her at all. I, <laughs> then I you were um, right. reply telepathically. Why the hell did you invite her on the ship? <laughs> I mean, look at her. She looks like she's good at tracking. Tracking? Whatever. All I know is um, don't let her walk behind you. <laughs> oh, she would never get the... How much did you give her? I didn't give her anything. I, I, she said she would just come with us, and then we would talk about it. Oh, so. <laughs> uh, sorry. I, my understanding is you were giving her 500 gold. I gave her 500 gold out of my money. 
We know we have four thousand in the ship funds. Well, she's gonna give it back. If we have to pay her, we will pay her with the ship funds because I do need that money to keep people yeah, alive. I was just saying. Remember, let me handle okay. the cash. I'll yeah, introduce I myself to her. So, <laughs> let me. I'll just introduce myself to her and let's be on our way. Okay. Okay, Gog. Um, let's set us. Um, we are setting sail to Thornhold. Let's be underway. All right. Uh, so set sail, raise anchor, and he starts shouting orders, and the crew starts uh, scurrying about. Um, he does seem as soon as like the actual sailing part commences, he does seem to kind of snap into like that routine and knows that a little better, um, and immediately starts going in and helping the crew um, cast off as the ship starts to creak and moan as it uh, careens out into the harbor and eventually out into the deeper water and the sails billow forward and you feel the ship picking up speed as you head south towards Thornhold. Um, it is, yeah, it's about a day's journey south to Thornhold. Uh, I believe the ship can tra has a travel pace of like 90 miles or something like that. Um, but regardless, it shouldn't take more than a day. Let me see what the Diora says. Yeah, 96 miles per day. So yeah, easy, you can get there in a day's time. Uh, the journey south goes relative, relatively uneventfully. Um, you the, the skies above are clear. The, the air is cold and brisk as fall continues to press on. Um, and you can see about halfway through the day the rising uh, almost shark tooth like structure of the island of where um, the Sahawagan fortress was and where the lizard folk are now reclaiming their old home. As you sail past uh, the sun shining above um, you can see various figures moving up on shore there. Uh, at one point um, a canoe, uh, a kind of outrigger canoe with multiple lizard folk on it come sailing out in the direction of you, sort of scoping you out. And as they notice the Diora, you see all of the lizard folk rise up in the in the canoe and wave as you go past the uh, island. Um, as the sun begins to set, uh, the coastline drifts past, and eventually the first thing that you come to notice of Thornhold as you're approaching. The sun is um, low on the horizon and up ahead you see far in the distance a collection of rocky islands rising up out of the water and to the east to your left you can see these grand massive mountains that come straight down into the sea creating these dramatic rocky cliff, cliff sides. And then you see catch a scent on the wind um, as the wind sort of shifts and the boat has to start to tack as it sort of moves at an angle to, to go upwind in the direction of Thornhold. And the wind catches you and the scent hits your nose. All day you've been getting the, the crisp, bright notes of the sea air and the salt, and suddenly it is fouled by something that this this awful pungent rich almost nauseating stench fills your nose um Thornhold, more like stink hold <laughs> <laughs> um and indeed as you say that aize and and look out in the direction you're headed you do see a noticeable difference in kind of the 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 atmosphere there's there's that sort of you know, ever-present marine layer, this sort of haze um, that from all the waves and the mist in the air of being on the ocean. And the haze itself all day has had, you know, a faint yellowish tinge to it from the sun. At this point, it's turning into kind of a red. And you can now see that there's almost this dark kind of brownish yellow haze forming along the coast in the direction you're going. Um, and as the sun is setting, the colors become incredibly rich and vibrant as it's passing through this this almost like a, a a forest fire you know but not quite that extreme the the light is being affected by whatever pollution is forming there um 
as the sun actually dips below the waves, you start to see little lights twinkling along the coastline, and you notice actual plumes of thick smoke rising from the city that you're approaching. Um, pulling uh, in, getting closer and closer, revealing the actual city structure itself, you can see that the mountains themselves come straight down into the water, forming this kind of, you know, half moon bay and the uh, built along the cliffs and going out into the bay itself there's numerous structures and the bay has a series of what look to be artificial islands that are connected by multiple bridges and catwalks uh and the islands themselves are dense they are packed and cluttered with shanties and um, what look to be like factories of some sort. There are crooked iron smokestacks rising up from multiple districts, billowing and belching smoke outwards. The ocean itself, as you approach, the the brilliant blue color that you've become accustomed to is is very rapidly mixing with like a brown yellowish sludge that is just pouring out of the harbor of Thornhold. In the center of this collection of artificial islands, you can see what looks to be what probably was once a beautiful, grand, like, alabaster lighthouse that is now tilted to one side and is pockmarked with what looks to be soot and mildew. And there is a collection of shanties that are built up around the base of it. And as the sun dips below the waves and the darkness starts to consume the city and all the lights start to twinkle before you, the lighthouse remains dark. Um, and at the back of the city and uh, what looks to be as you're pulling into the harbor itself and starting to get more details, there is a much finer district, still kind of lopsided structures. Everything here is lopsided. Everything seems to be sinking into the sea itself. And in fact, you can even see some structures are submerged in the water and other buildings have built have been built atop of those um, in to almost replace them but there is one district that seems to have mm, somewhat finer buildings and rising from that even above the lighthouse itself there is a very tall uh, black and red tower that rises up um, Gog is kind of keeping an eye out and you eventually are met by some skiffs that come out into the sludgy harbor and lead you towards the harbor master port. Um, eventually you tie the ropes up and get pulled in. Um, and again, the smell is just really starting to fill your nostrils at this point. At one point, Aspen, as you are kind of watching the crew throw ropes over and pulling the ship in, you kind of hear things bumping against the edge of the hull and look over the edge and you can see just bloated carcasses of uh, like pigs and cows that have been slaughtered that are just floating in the water getting pushed aside as you were <laughs> pulled into port. You see multiple ships all docked here and uh, various denizens moving throughout the streets. Um, and as you're exiting off the gangplanks into the now busy, very dense, crowded, stinky port of Thornhold, or as uh, some call it, the Styes. Um, you do start to see many of the workers that are pulling you in. Uh, some of them seem to have like very uh, watery red eyes. Um, some have um, boils forming on their cheeks and, and jaw bones. Um, their skin is a bit sallow. Um, but you are greeted by uh, this kind of plump half-orc woman who comes sauntering out. Um, her clothes are a bit disheveled and she has a big book at her side and is kind of like going through it, looks over at you all. All right, uh, what's, uh, what's the name of the vessel that you brought here into the stars? Um, the Diora. Well, the Diora, okay. What's the business in the stars? Uh, we... Oh. Uh... <laughs> I looked at you. We came to uh, look for a friend of ours. Look for a friend, all right, sure. What's your friend's name? Uh, Scarin. Scarin, all right. Okay, all sounds good. Uh, it'll be, uh, 
There'll be uh, five silver pieces for each day that you stay within Thornhold. Um, forgive me, Thornhold. Uh, and uh, for, if you don't mind paying up uh, five silver now, holds out a hand. Uh, you talk to him. That's our money, man. Um, and I will kind of uh, walk over to the side. Um, can I make like a medicine check on this? Like, yes. Yes, he is. Like, whatever this yeah, is. Yeah, so there, when you're down in the city itself, it's not like you see gas billowing through the streets, but there is like, you are starting to notice like a little tickle at the back of your throat, almost like you're getting a sore throat. And mm. when you look up, you can just kind of see that dense smog above and lots of smoke billowing out of the smokestacks further into the city. Um, go ahead and make a medicine check, though. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Eleven. Eleven? Um, you... I mean, it is clear to you that, that folks are probably having issues, like, like skin skin issues and, and respiratory issues because of the, uh, the pollution that's here. Um, it, it... It reminds you of... Uh... It, it could be something analogous to, there's a disease known as sight rot, which if untreated can eventually lead to blindness. Um, you do know that there are ways to treat it. You don't know the exact ways. You just know that there's some um, herbal remedies that can treat it. You're just not entirely certain what is used for it. Um, and it is likely being caused by whatever's in the air. Uh, and as a result, yeah, depending on how long you stay here, you might end up experiencing symptoms from whatever is, is in the air itself. Okay. I will make that known to Ayuse, Um And I will let the crew know okay. once the woman leaves, though. Yeah. Um, so she takes the coin, puts it aside, closes up the book. All right. Welcome to Thornhold or whatever. Just make sure you pay in the morning, every day you stay. Uh, all right, so see you around. And she goes and starts wandering off, looking, checking on boats as she disappears into the crowd. Uh, welcome to Thornhold. Uh, what is the first thing you all would like to do? I can break out the apparatus and see if Skarn's here. Okay. Um, you pop out the apparatus and, um, you know, I use a, if, if you don't mind, I'm, I'm kind of curious, what do you imagine this apparatus looking like? I imagined it, I think I described it as it had like a compass that was attached in some way to the sending stone and the needle would kind of point in the direction. Um, do you have any th details you want to add to it since you helped, uh, uh, Keledek with this? I imagine it being like a, a circular apparatus mm -hmm. with a metal ring and then like a tr like a tripod with the stone hanging in the middle. Cool. Okay. And uh, kind of like that. And uh, yeah, <laughs> that okay, way. cool. And then the top is uh, where the arrow is and it rotates. Yeah. Okay. That's and awesome. That's so, so as you, uh, as you pull it out and look at it, it you do in, in fact, see the, the arrow starting to, to twitch and then <laughs> point in a direction. I uh, pull out the archive, note the location or note the direction. Yes. yes uh, compass. I got it. I got it. Uh, it appears to be, uh, give me a moment as I actually pull up the map and um, but we'll have to triangulate. Oh, indeed, okay, indeed. Um, okay. It, yeah, so you see it pointing. Um, you all have ended up uh, over in the main harbor. The harbor master pull, uh, directed you to this portion of the city. I don't know if you can see the map at the moment. Um, I'm going to send our viewers as well over. Um... So yeah, you pulled into port here, and um, uh, this is kind of on the coastline. You know, going north would be going up towards Thorn, uh, towards Saltmarsh, um, and you came in through this main harbor mouth here, and have ended up here. And you see the uh, needle is pointing in kind of a northeast direction, um, 
out toward uh, mo a little more this way. So, um, would you like to follow it? No. Okay. Um, I'm thinking the smarter, well, the wisest course would be to. Um, f I, I'm talking to Aspen. Follow along the docks here to about here. Okay. And then I'll take another reading and see where the lines interpose. Okay. That sounds Because that will give us a precise location unless he's moving. <laughs> okay. Okay. Cool. Um, before we go, I will pull Eloise aside um, and I will let her know that um, whatever this like disease is that or whatever we're coming down with to keep like uh, lesser restoration or greater restoration if she has it uh, keep it prepared uh, yes I can I can do that um, and Eloise uh, as she kind of comes up onto the deck and getting ready um, you know stocky olive skin woman with the straight black hair uh, shaved on one side um, she uh, kind of turns to you did you want me to accompany you uh, you and Aize as you head off into the city uh, I think we will be quite all right. Uh, okay. Nobody is going to bother us. But um, you guys should not stay on this ship, though. Do uh, Please right. remind Gog to pay every day that we're not around. Yes, which I... Which is probably going to be most <laughs> of the time. I'll be sure to do that. Thank you. Do we want to take... Uh, I'll telepathically link to Aspen. Do we want to take the bodyguard? Uh, you see... Uh, yes. Yeah, you see Aerileth, like, <laughs> leaning against the railing. She has all her stuff ready, kind of watching you as you're doing all this, and then leans over the, the railing, looking down at you on the, on the kind of cobblestones of the harbor. Yes, am I, um... What would you like me to do? You, you are going to help us find our friend Skarin. Uh, right. Are you good at tracking? Well, uh, it is part of my job, yes. Okay, well, then, uh, you, you come with us. Very well. Um, and she joins you. So, uh, you all are going to head along the harbor going, um, like I easily said. So as you move, uh, move in that direction along the harbor, um, you push out into the city. And the city itself is... A mismatch, mix, mismatch of there are areas of cobblestone, and then there are areas where it seems the cobblestone itself is completely like sunken away in a in a sinkhole, and it kind of shatters and breaks away, revealing below just like a muddy pit of uh, refuse and um, slick, strange colors kind of running throughout. Um, and in those areas, there are sort of uh, questionable construction catwalks that have been strung across to, to remedy the now ruined path that has fallen away. Um, this district doesn't seem to be as in bad disrepair, but every once in a while you come across things like that. Um, and as you move through this portion of the city, uh, it appears that there are a lot of vendors that you're passing. You see lots of stalls and shops. Um, you see some uh, inns and uh, taverns that you've moved past and as um, the evening is progressing you see more and more people are kind of moving through the streets and going to these raucous taverns where there's loud um, laughter and and uh, sounds like shouting and every once in a while you move past a tavern and a couple of folks come spilling out onto the street in a fist fight yelling at each other um, there's even a, 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 as you approach um, and get to about where I use it, where you said, when you get to about this area, you can see directly across the way um, from where you are there, the, the district seems to shift in the architecture. Um, whereas the area you were at was a lot of shops and um, kind of public facing buildings with taverns and inns, as well as some abandoned structures. Across the way, you see more majestic looking, like almost like municipal buildings. There's even some that appear to be made of like grand pieces of marble and they have columns. But as you start to look at it and see the details come into focus, you start to notice that some of these buildings are completely abandoned. Um, some of them are 
pockmarked with mildew and mold uh, all across the face of the building. There's there's lichen clinging to, to some of these buildings, like they have not been well maintained. And everything is just at strange, odd angles, um, like it's been sinking into the mud. Uh, when you get to here, Aize, you look at the needle and it is pointing, um, it is pointing due north. Okay, Archive, assist me. Yes, all right. Let's take a look here and here and triangulate. All right, uh, yes, and he uh, kind of helps you uh, get the... Uh, so you're taking those two points and trying to figure out where the third may be? Yes. Okay. Um, yeah, I would say that no role necessary for that with your expertise and knowledge of this. You're able to kind of calculate the two positions that you're at with Archive's help. Um, and determine that it appears that the point is, um, I mean, you don't really have, you know what, I'll say you do have a map of this area because of what Scarin had, Scarin's like local maps that he had. Mm -hmm. So looking at the map and using that to help you triangulate, um, it looks as though the point is roughly here. Do you see where my arrow is pointing? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so that is roughly where it is. So you'll either have to arc your way around or find a, you know, hire a boat to take you across. Well, we can walk our way there. There's there's a clear path we can walk there. Okay. So um, the, th the three of you um, start walking through this district. Uh, moving through this district, you, you move past what looks to be a, a massive um, municipal like city hall building. Um, th there is activity within there. Um, you also move directly past uh, at this point here that large black and red tower that's rising up before you as you cross one of these bridges. And this bridge is an actual stone bridge, um, better construction that's moving across. Um, and into this district as you move, the Tickled, tickling feeling at the back of your throat and the burning sensation at the corners of your eyes becomes more and more extreme as it seems there are more and more buildings as you move into this district that have these iron smokestacks that are belching out fumes. Um, and you see a lot of industrial buildings here, big warehouses. You see what look to be factories. There's um, a lot of industry happening in this district. But as you move across uh, another large stone bridge, um, you come into what look to be like smaller shops and homes, all kind of built and stacked on top of each other. And as you're following that needle, you eventually find yourself going straight up to what appears to be um, a tavern. <clears throat> Give me a moment. It appears that the, uh, the other, the sending stone to which this is associated with uh, Scarin, that is. Um, well, it's in the tavern. Okay. Well, we have to be careful about this. You remember, he did stab Vorik in the neck, and it wasn't pretty. Hmm. So. I look to, um. I look to Aralith. Mm hmm. And I say, you may want to steal yourself. All right, yes, um, and she draws out a thin rapier, or not doesn't draw it out, but she puts her hand on the hilt of a, of a thin rapier. Oh, you want to do this, Captain? Kick in the door or pretend that we're patrons? Understand, Scarin knows exactly what we look like. Oh, yes, that is, uh, well, we don't want to kick in this man's, or this person's door, because then we would have to pay for that. We just walk in, and if Scarin tries to run, I will try to cast a spell, if I can. Did you ever manage to get out of self? I did not, no. Alright. Uh, I'm wondering if I should summon Chantelier and Bertolot. <laughs> Chanticleer and Bertolot, but that's pretty conspicuous. Alright. Okay, so as um, the, the, the tavern you see before you, um, it appears to be kind of a very low, like almost like sagging building in the middle that kind of stretches out to either side. And on top of it 
uh, it looks like a collection of homes that sort of lean, or like apartments that almost like lean out over the street with peaked roofs. And the tavern seems to be built on the bottom floor. Um, but the whole thing seems to be almost like bowing in the center, like it's sagging. Um, and to get down into the tavern, you have to go down these like stone steps that go down below um, street level. Um, and you can hear sort of, actually what you hear is, um, you, you hear the, the typical bur burble and murmur of folks within. And then every once in a while that's accented by these loud, like raucous shouts and boos of people being like, ah, boo, sort of uh, echoing out from this space. Um, but do you all, what do you all do? Are you going to enter into this space or what, what's, what's, uh, yeah, what's happening here? Uh, we don't have much choice, I use a. So, uh, I will just open the door and kind of, uh, Hold look up. in, peek in. I'm Aerith lead. Oh. Sure, I can do that. Um, as she goes down and, um, peels open the door and looks inside. Looks back. Uh, let's see here. Uh, looks back. Don't. I don't. I actually don't entirely know who I'm looking for, but it looks like a tavern. Let's go on in. Okay. Um, as you all filter inside, uh, you sort of are suddenly hit. Uh, the the air outside was was cold and brisk, and as you walk inside, it is kind of stiflingly hot and damp and sticky um there is a lot of people in here sort of crowded throughout the roof is very low um like almost to the point where you feel like you have to slightly hunch as you're walking through this space um you can see there is a lot of um dwarves and gnomes in this space um there is a good amount of humans as well um but there do seem to be these collections of dwarves and gnomes that are sort of gathered around tables drinking their ale and a bunch of individuals kind of watch and follow you as you move through the space um there is a low um bar at the back that kind of wraps around this whole establishment seems to be kind of an l and off at the far end of the l to the right there is this very shoddily made little stage. And there's a lot of people sitting around on tables just talking amongst themselves and currently kind of glancing in that direction and then going back to what they're doing. Um, there seems to be a small, like, older gnomish man up on stage who's delivering jokes and people seem to keep booing at him. Uh, and you also see up at the front there is a very, like, burly looking large dwarven man big beard um has this like elegant cape and he's kind of sitting by himself arms crossed looking up at this performer up on stage um but that's what you see as you walk in oh man he should really read the room i don't think any oh anyway he didn't come here for that he, uh so i will I guess we blend in as best as we can, I use Oh, there's no blending in here. That's <laughs> true. Uh, oh, well. Maybe Shifty could maybe. be here, but we're not. That's no true. chance. Um, I'm, let's find a... Can we find a corner table? Uh, yeah, there's one all the way at the back, at the, the top of the L, kind of just behind that big dwarvish individual, um, sort of close to that stage. Um, Ms. Erelith, if you please lead the way. Yes, of I course. I want to get to that table. Um, and she will weave her way through the crowd and nestle in next to that table um, as you all come piling in. Um, if the both of you could block me, then I'll break out the apparatus and see what where it points. Okay. Um, okay. So as the two of you sort of position yourself so that there's a little, uh, you're kind of blocking line of sight to the room so Aize can pull out the apparatus and look at it. Um, Aize, as you're looking at it, you can kind of see the, the needle seems to sort of be like having a hard time pointing in the exact direction. It's kind of like sort of like spinning. Um, and as you're sort of looking at it, um, there's a sudden, uh, you notice this Aspen, there's a sudden jolt as the large dwarven man that's sitting next to you sort of 
like suddenly pushes the 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 table away from him and stands up violently looking with like with this awful scowl on his face looking up at the stage and goes boo you suck get off the stage and grabs uh what looks to be a big sort of like half eaten chicken leg that's sitting on his plate and just chucks it up at the old gnomish man up on stage as it goes sailing through the air and you watch as just before it's gonna smack this old gnomish gentleman straight in the face he seems to shunt to the side and the chicken legs slams against the wall with a loud splat and uh as that happens eric do you mind describing um Describing yourself, what the characters see sitting up on stage there as you get shunted to the side? Yes, so they're gonna see a barely three foot tall gnome. Um, definitely uh, not a fighter type, uh, although he does have some armor underneath his robes. Uh, his robes are quite nice, everything's kind of green, but he doesn't look like he's a forest gnome. He might be. I uh, st- st- uh, rock no, just because of the um, kind of color of his skin and uh, his features. He's a, he's a, not particularly attractive. <laughs> okay, and uh, what do you do? Um, um, what do you do in reaction to this as that chicken leg goes flying past you? Uh, by the way, it says Volrock the Grim under my name. But um, oh no, it does. Let me fix that for you. Um... I will fix that for you as as we go. All right. So, in reaction to the um, almost uh, foul attack from the audience, uh, he just kind of is very stoic, no expression. Knock knock. And you see the the dwarven man just looking like his face is starting to turn red. Uh, somebody else in the crowd, though, this like young uh, uh, gnomish girl uh, goes who's there orc what sorry what was it orc uh, or who uh, uh. awkward silence and the entire crowd just just goes into a loud moan Oh my god! Um, the, the gnomish girl seems to be ecstatic though as she's staring up. <laughs> oh my god, it's orcish! And the red faced, big, burly dwarf. Oh, I'm telling you! And he pushes the table aside as it uh, sort of gets pushed over and slams onto the ground and comes stomping up to the stage, straight up to um, this little gnomish man looming over you, looking down, red-faced. I've had enough. You get off this stage right now! Uh, that's a nice sword you have. Uh, I'm trying to think of a pun for sword, but I can't think of anything with a dual meaning. And he goes red-faced uh, as the Novish girl starts laughing and the whole crowd uh, begins to moan. And he draws his sword and brings the hilt down towards you, Volric. Or sorry, towards you, uh, not <laughs> Volric. Um, towards you, sure, I'll just say your name. Towards you, Glum. Um, yeah. This is at disadvantage, right? Yeah. Uh, yes. Okay, yeah, so there's... There's no way. Um, uh, I rolled a natural four. Um, yeah. So what does this look like as as he brings the hilt of the sword down like he's trying to just clock you right in the jaw? So if you roll the four, I notice that he's already aiming where I'm not. So I'm still standing completely still. <laughs> and he'll just basically bury his weapon into the stage. You Yeah, and... you watch the, the, the big uh, dwarven, uh, dwarven man. The hilt of the sword just comes straight past where Glum was. Glum shifts to the side again, and the hilt just kush, right into the stage, sending splinters everywhere. And relentless with my efforts to entertain, I, I just look up at him. Did you know I was once paid to let wizard apprentices practice their sleep spells on me? <sighs> it, was, it was a dream job. <laughs> and he 
Vroom. swings the sword again towards you, this time uh, with the blade. Um, and okay. he's he's going to attack recklessly, so this will just be a All straight right. roll. Okay. <laughs> uh, can we do something about this? If you want. Um, so that is a uh, that is a 10 to hit. <laughs> Glum. So misses. Uh, I retaliate with one more joke. <laughs> what do you say? If you cross an owl bear, if you cross an owl with a bear and get an owl bear, what do you get when you cross an owl with a gnome? Uh, he goes to and grab I, you, and yeah, what do you say? I go, I go like this. I go, who knows? Oh my god! <laughs> he just, he just is now like swinging his sword wildly down at the stage. Pieces of splinter flying everywhere <laughs> as he's trying to hit this gnome. Uh, and rolls a natural one. So slamming the sword down on the stage as you're just watching the gnome go, pew, 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 dodging from side to side, seeming to not, you're just standing there stoically, right? As this is yes. happening. Um, mm -hmm. With his final big heavy swipe of the sword, it slams down into the stage. And then <laughs> breaks under it. On his ass and all you see are just his legs sticking up from the hole in the ground. Oops. Hold on. Did my mic cut out? I hear you still. You hear well, at least still? I hear you on uh, Zoom. I'm worried that my mic cut out on the stream. Nope, it looks like it's still working. Um, yeah, so he is now just lying prone, his feet sticking up. And with that, honestly, even though the jokes are so bad, the entire crowd erupts in a big roar and starts clapping. Uh, and I think since we're at 745 here, as that moment happens, we're going to take a quick break uh, as Glum has been introduced to the party. <laughs> All right, we'll be right back. Thanks, everybody. Um, we'll see you soon. Uh, be back right soon. back. Bye.
Hi everyone, welcome back. Uh, it looks like while we were on break, we got raided. I don't know if y'all are still there, but welcome. Thanks for coming over. Uh, oh, where'd you, where you all come from? Quests and Chaos, nice. Uh, cool. Thanks for stopping by. Hope you all are still there. Um, yeah, we're just dressed to quests. We're D and D and D actual play, and we cosplay. <laughs> Hence the wild makeup and costumes. Woo. Um, yeah, thanks for joining. That's awesome. Uh, all right, well, let's jump right back into this. So we just got introduced to a new character. <clears throat> Excuse me. We just got introduced to Glum, who was up on stage delivering terrible jokes uh, in a CD tavern. And he just, uh, a burly dwarf just tried to beat him to a pulp um, and instead broke the stage and fell through the stage onto his ass. Um, so as... The crowd is erupted into big cheers and people are clanging ale tankards together and, and clapping. Um, so, uh, it looks like some bodyguards have come out from the back, uh, or from, from the front door and are pulling that big dwarf off the stage and throwing him out onto the street. Uh, Glum, what are you doing in this moment as, as um, things are starting to settle down? Uh, I'll be here all week. Uh, there's... There's an immediate, the there's an immediate ripple of, oh gods, as people start to, to <laughs> like moan and boo. Okay, and I, I walk off the stage. Okay, so you uh, go off the stage. As you go off the stage, um, as all this commotion is happening, uh, Aerileth kind of leans over to you, Aspen, and goes, that was terrible. Um, I'm going to go get us some drinks, yes? You know, why don't I accompany you? Um, sure. and I just look to the gnomish man. Uh, I don't know. I th I think Aspen would kind of like look at him and picture like Shifty in a way, because uh, that's who, like, she thinks about often. Okay. Because that's her best friend. So I'm just like, oh man, that guy was really, really bad. <laughs> like in, in her mind though, she's like, he was terrible. He needs a new job. <laughs> um, and I'm just, I just look to you say, you're gonna be okay here. Oh, Are certainly, you gonna be, um, be okay? I'll be fine, but um, I'm not drinking anything in, from this tavern, that's for sure. <laughs> but you can bring me a drink if only for our appearances. Uh, I put away the apparatus. Okay. <laughs> Put it away. Um, we're here. Whatever is, whatever we're looking for. Just so you know, it's here. Okay. So uh, uh, I will keep an eye out. Oh. I Got keep uh, my summoning spell poised. Okay. All right. Uh, so Aerileth, uh heads over to the bar with you, Aspen, and she orders a round of drinks. Um. What did you want to do something in particular, uh, Aspen? I did. I wanted to ask her about her conversation with uh, Shinyar. Oh, sure. Mm -hmm. um, what do you ask? So uh, you mentioned the other day, yesterday, <sighs> that you and Shinyar were having a conversation. Um, what about? Yes, I'm surprised she's not here. Um, Tell that she seemed to be keen on you. No, uh, I was just talking with her. She seemed interesting, and uh, I honestly, I was looking to have a good time uh, that evening, and I noticed that she was alone. <laughs> I think uh, Aspen will kind of just not shut down, but she will go quiet okay and uh, just not for a second and um i think she will summon summon her her battle axe and just kind of place it on the bar the bar <laughs> top and it goes on the bar Aerileth kind of looks at it that's quite impressive thank where, you where? i Listen, if you're going to work with us, I need you to do one thing. Don't mention Shinyar again. All right, that's not a problem. 
Okay. And I will, I'll see you back at the table. I'll, I'll take bring, my- I'll bring the drinks over. You should hurry. All right, I will. Um, as and she turns I, back to get the drinks. Yeah, I will take my ax and I will put it back. And um, I will walk over to, I will actually, I will invite the no man to sit with us. Okay, so Glum, where uh, where are you at this moment? So he knows that he can get free drinks since he's um, yep. in stand-up. <laughs> so he'll be, as um, Aspen approaches, he's speaking to a uh, waiter and um, uh, he's sitting. He's sitting on a, a, a couple books too, because um, you know he's really tiny. And then he says, um, "I'll have a glass of your most expensive wine, mixed with a glass of your cheapest wine, served in a dog bowl with a straw, please." Um, the barkeep on the other side, um, kind of a, a scraggly-haired gentleman. Um, sort of scrunches scrunches his face. Oh, well, I could get you a, a big bowl if you want that. Yeah, whatever, sure. And uh, he goes and starts concocting whatever that is. <laughs> okay. And he looks up at Aspen as she, walk, as she walks up. No autograph. Oh. oh, trust me, I wasn't coming for that. You were horrible. Um, I did want to invite you back to my table, though. Uh, Is that okay with you? Or why? Well, the way you just definitely dodge that dwarven man, um, I saw some potential in you, and I thought maybe you would like a job. One that doesn't require you to tell any joke whatsoever. I've already got four jobs. I have a job as an entertainer. I have a job as a- Are you sure? I have a job as a dock worker, and I'm also a motivational speaker. <laughs> <laughs> a motivational speaker. I, the dock worker, that is believable, but- um, an entertainer and a motivational speaker. Do you speak like that every time? Speak like one. Okay. So, um, we were buying rounds and we really wanted to, um, You're have buying. you sit with us. Yes. All right. And so he immediately hops off and takes his two books and shoves them into a bag that it shouldn't fit inside of. So it's probably a bag of holding. And uh, he kind of scurries up to you. Where are you sitting? D um, this way, and I will lead him back to the table. And I will, I will quickly cast a message to Aize. I will try to do this. I won't subtle spell it. But I will try to do it so he doesn't see me. Okay. Uh, do I have to roll? Uh, yeah, make a sleight of hand check. Okay. This is gonna be horrible. Nineteen. Okay. What is your passive perception, uh, Glum? Uh, it's got to be lower than a nineteen, right? Oh, it's definitely lower than nineteen. Okay. Yeah. yeah so... so you don't notice. So go I'm ahead. Like, I I messaged I used it and I said heads up. Terrible comedian and bound. <laughs> and I will um, sit uh, next to Aize and I will let him climb into the booth uh, where uh, next to Aerolith. Uh, oh, Aerolith is at the bar waiting once, for Once she comes back. Okay. Yeah, once she comes back. Okay. Uh, so you all gather up there at the booth. Uh, Aize, you see Glum sort of plop, plop down with you all. I say to Glum in Gnomish, knock, knock. I respond in Gnomish, who's there? Nobel. Nobel who? Nobel, that's why I knock. 
What's your name? Sorry? What's your name? I am Ayize Marley. What's your name? I am Glum. It's really nice to meet you. It's very nice to meet you as well, Glum. Uh, I switch back to Common. And I say, he's a real card. <laughs> uh, he's Apparently, he's a motivational speaker and an entertainer uh, and a doc worker. I wrote a, a book that I sell when I do my motivational seminars. And I pull one out of that bag of holding. And it says in Common, why bother? <laughs> well, two gold pieces. Can I read the little synopsis? You know what? Never mind. Um. So, what's your we name? Were, uh, you can call me Aspen. Aspen, it's really nice to meet you. I feel so motivated every time you talk. You are something um <laughs> we need help we are looking for someone and maybe if you join us you can like bore him to death or something <laughs> ah, i see i spent as a motivational speaker too uh, <laughs> i thought you were giving me free drinks what do you need oh yeah oh. you can definitely have our drinks yeah yeah they're coming. And I point back to the half elven woman that's at the bar. Uh, she's uh, not she'll there. Be here. I look around for her. <laughs> I will, yeah, I will look around for her. Make a perception roll. 23. Oh, is that a natural? It's a natural 20. Ooh. Wow. Okay. Um, you just catch. Uh, you recognize her boots as they are slipping upstairs. Like there's a, a there's a there's a there's a set of rickety stairs that, towards the front of the tavern, um, back mm -hmm. in the direction you came of like where the L kind of started, and um, there's a set of rickety stairs that kind of arc upwards um, to whatever may be upstairs. Where is she? She's and I point in that direction. Um, I will point in that direction, but I will message her. What are you doing? No response. Ah, you know what this is? She I, runs I'm away with my money. This. I'm gonna. This is the sting of betrayal. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know the bitter drink of betrayal, Glum? <laughs> Glum. I haven't okay. tried that yet. Ah, well, I suspect that she's gone to, what's the word term? Rat us out. We need to go now. Up the stairs right or out? Yes, uh, up the stairs. No, 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 no. We're going for her. She's not going to just, yes. Um, we, if we're we going gave for her, her money. What? What happens if she just whips out a rapier and stabs us in the eyeball or something? I mean, it's not the first time we've been stabbed. I'm just I wondering if I should summon something. Is any of this stuff happening um, verbally or is it all just your spells? Um, no, I'm speaking out loud. No, yeah, I'm speaking out loud too. So noticing that, is this going to be one of those cool tavern gatherings where things get out of control and we murder someone and then we all have to take a blood oath to never reveal our secret? You know, you have a very active imagination, but... Um, blood oath? It might come to that, possibly. Are you in? If there's wine, I'm in. Good, um, you're on point. <laughs> yeah, so... Um, from out from under my cloak, then he pulls out a buckler and a hand crossbow. Okay. <laughs> As those come out. So cute. Where are we going? That's the most adorable thing. No, it don't. is so adorable. <laughs> and he's three feet tall? Yeah. 
And I go, and then all of a sudden, very loud, I yell, Scott! Uh, as he shouts that, um, at this moment, the bartender is trying to, like, come across the room with what looks to be, like, a big copper bowl that probably wasn't meant for, uh, food, um, that he's sort of, like, trying to get across the way with that's, like, filled to the brim with this strange concoction that you've made, um, that you've asked for, and as, uh, he's kind of coming across, you hear a loud commotion at the front door as the front door slams open and the two bodyguards sort of stumble back and you see a silhouette of what looks to be almost like a horse but like a very big wide horse shaggy standing in the door um but the fur isn't moving and as it comes loping into the room um actually i guess it's not quite as big as a horse it's like it's like a great dane sized right glum yeah uh yeah he's he's like a like we're the biggest dog you'll ever see in your life. Okay, yeah. so uh, between like a Great Dane and what, like a tiny pony sort of thing. Um, so, you know, probably up to like your uh, your chest a little higher. As it comes loping into the room, um, you, instead of hearing what you'd expect to hear, like hooves or paws, you hear this kind of strange, hollow, metallic boom, 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 um, as it comes lumbering into the room and people push off to the side. Um, this creature seems to just barrel through a table that spills off to one side and at, and at the last moment the bartender goes wide-eyed and looks as this thing comes into the room and sort of uh, steps back and falls on his ass as the l liquid is sloshing in the bowl um and you see what looks to be a uh, glum what does this look like as this creature comes loping right up to the bartender and kind of stops and looks down at the bartender and shoves its snout into the big bowl of liquid what did, what does everybody see so, yeah, so they do see, as you've mentioned, right, a giant metallic dog. It looks like it's an automaton of some sort, but it's still lapping up the um, wine as if it were something they would want to consume. And Glenn will walk up, putting his buckler for, away for a second. He's going to grab that straw from the waiter. Mm -hmm. And as as um, Scott, Scott is drinking from the bowl, I'll stick my straw in and start drinking too <laughs> okay <laughs> so there's this little like tin straw that's coming out of the bowl that glum is just <laughs> slurping up next to this giant metallic scotty dog that's just <laughs> lapping we'll, up the liquid we'll drink it quickly uh and then um i say all right we're ready and then um i say scott we're point and i'll start walking up the stairs uh with my buckler and crossbow out we'll be side by side walking up okay. if, if we can go side by side since we're if not uh, we're gonna... you no they, these are very narrow like hallways so it's just you you kind of have to go single file as you head upstairs um I'll, I'll i'll go ahead and um i'll write him then you'll write him okay so you hop on the back of this uh metallic scotty dog and start um riding him upstairs um, the rest of you, I assume, follow? Uh, yes. Yep. Okay. Um, let me do something really quick. Uh, okay, cool. So, going, going upstairs. Try to do this as quickly as I can. Uh, sorry, one sec. I am frantically putting something together here. Uh, let's just go with that one. Yeah, just go with this one. All right. Um, This and I should just really I should show our audience what the hell is happening here. It's more entertaining than me just trying to stall. Um, all right, so you you head upstairs and um, find yourself going down a narrow hallway. There are multiple uh, doors branching off to the left and right, as well as one uh, directly ahead of you. Um, what are you all doing? I'm calling my battle axe back out. Okay. And I will 
I will try to find her again. Um, okay, uh, go ahead and make a perception roll. No. <laughs> yeah, six. You got a six? <laughs> I, yeah, I think at this point I'm pissed because I, we gave her money. Yeah. And she's trying to play us. And <laughs> Okay, so. That's, that's, I'm not here for it. <laughs> I mean, yeah, with the six, you don't. You don't hear anything or see anything as you're moving down the halls. Like you, I mean, you hear like, th- basically, you hear the loud sound of the tavern downstairs of people, you know, um, doing their thing. You say there's multiple doors up here. Yeah. Um, let's go with. Sorry, I'm. I was like trying to. Let's go with. Uh, there's there's five doors that you've come up into five on each side um there are three to your left and two to your right uh are there any windows no you are in like an enclosed hallway okay how big is the area um, so you've come up into a hallway that is, and in fact, sorry, Glum, um, this is all happening very dynamically. Um, the hallway is about 10 feet, 10-ish feet wide, so you could be side by side. Um, and it's about 30, 30-ish feet long or so, so 10 by 30. We're working with something like that. Okay. Um, I say, where's your friend? <laughs> Well, she's not exactly our friend anymore. So... You want me to open the doors? Yeah. I can actually... Okay, I use a snaps, what happens? No, I don't want to interrupt Aspen. Go ahead, what? No, 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 you're good, you're you're fine, you're good. I'll snap my fingers Uh and I will fire off this spell. Conjure minor elementals. Okay. <laughs> what do you summon? Oh, wait a minute. How flammable is this place? Oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it is all wood. The thing is, as I described as you came in, it is very like hot and sticky in here, and you notice there's like kind of everything is a little spongy almost. Like not quite, but like it. There's a dampness in the air. All right. Um, yeah, I'll do it. I'll summon two. Sorry, one sec. It's too small for. Um, it's too small for uh, Chanticleer and Pertilot. So I will summon two fire snakes. Okay. And I will call them both up. Okay. Uh, how big are the fire snakes? Um, they're medium sized. They're not huge. Okay. Cool. So, um, what do they? What does it look like as they suddenly appear? Uh, two circles of fire appear on the ground. Okay. Each one is about two feet across, and they both sort of emerge from them like elevators. Okay, so they sort of slither out um, and flop yeah. onto the um, wooden floor. They curl up and both look at you expectantly, these tendrils of flame coming off the backs of their heads. I shall name thee Tristan, and I shall name thee Isolde. As they look at you. Tristan and Isolde, go to that door. As you Tristan, you go to that door. Isolde, you go to that door. And uh, as best you can, open them. Okay. You have, well, you have wait, control. I use it. Oh, go ahead. I was going to say, I use it. I, I have something that can help if the doors are not locked. I can try it. And if not, well, burn them. I don't care. Burn it down. All right. Come back, Tristan and Sorry, Sorry. <laughs> they're they're like in. both like rearing up, getting ready to strike these doors. And then they kind of look at you. <sighs> back here, back here. Can oh, they just slither good. back? You I looked control. at Glum. Sorry, Glum, control. what was your question? You have control over those snakes? Uh, yes, I do. 
They're not going to make, make a hissy fit. <laughs> <laughs> I cast Thaumaturgy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no. You cast uh, Thaumaturgy and um, three of the five doors <laughs> come slamming open. Um, inside one of them, there's uh, two um, bodies, like, kind of moving under some blankets and immediately you see oh. somebody pop out and go hey <sighs> like pulling the blankets over themselves sorry uh room service you know how it is and then i close the door <laughs> wasn't that room other uh the other two rooms y'all can still hear me right yeah okay mm-hmm. my i bumped my mic and i get really paranoid that it's uh not gonna work um the other two rooms are empty Oh, right. But there's still two closed doors. Still, still, still two closed doors, yeah. So those doors are locked. Tristan, is sold. Left door. Yes. They slither over to the left door. And you want them to just, like, attack it? To, to, yep. to burn it down? Okay. Um, do you want me to roll for them, or do you want to roll for them? I can do it. Okay, go for it. There's the bite... And, um... Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's a door, so they hit, no problem. Um, and I'd say that with... So that's the first one, okay? And then with the second hit, let's see if they hit with the tail. Well, the one. One, okay, so that one, the tail <laughs> slams against the door as it's starting to crack and burn. Um, but then... Oh, they each have two attacks, yep. bite on the tail. Then the other snake goes in, <laughs> and let's see. Wow, that's another one. I'm not doing well with them. Wow, so they are slamming into this door, causing a lot of noise as the flames are starting to lick up, and let's see if the uh, final hit can break it. There you go. So with that, the door splinters open um, and reveals a room on the other side, Uh, and inside there is a... There is an elderly uh, gnomish... Um, an elderly gnomish woman who uh, was sort of like is, is like pushed up on the bed looking terrified at the door as it bursts open and she's just going ah! so how scary. about that just then it's so last door <laughs> so after after that second door was clobbered yeah then uh, I kind of you know without using reins I use my hips and move Scott towards the third door I go Scott, the doors are the enemy. And he's going to ram into it with his head and try and knock it over. All right, go for it. Roll an attack roll. I, I was going to do an athletic check. athletics, that's fine. Yeah, athletics is fine. He wants to just like, did I roll? Did that happen or not? Uh, yeah, with a 19, he poof, slams into the door and you hear a punk and the hinges pop off and the door poof, uh, flies inward. Um, as soon as it opens and poof, flies inward, you hear uh, uh, um, Glum, you hear the sound, the distinctive sound, you know this sound. You hear the sound of two crossbows um, as two bolts come flying at you. Uh, Let's see if they hit. I don't think so, with a 10 and a 13. um, They ricochet off your butler, buckler. Um, I need everybody to roll initiative. Right. Uh, okay, I can't select my token though, so just straight initiative. Uh, yeah, the, they will go. Oh, you can't select your. Oh, sorry. Let me um send you over to the map. Right, I forgot. Uh, okay. I had to really quickly throw this together. So we'll go with this. This is the map we're going to be using. Um, okay. So the door, the doorway they were hiding in, is the one to the north there. Um, you can see where Scott is. He just slammed the door open there. Um, I use a, I hope it's fine. I put the two snakes on either side. That's um, fine. And we'll see what happens. Oh, I rolled twice. Just take the first roll. Okay. Uh, okay. Um, it looks like your first roll was an 11. Okay, and it looks like um, Glum, you got a three. 
Uh, that's for, uh, for for Scott. I have to. Have, I'm trying to find my uh, Glum token. So if if you want, just for simplicity, this is how I've been running because in my oh, it's supposed to. Yeah, actually, he, no, no, I, I totally screwed up. He He's goes to go right after you. Yeah. Yeah. So let me let me roll for me. Where am I? Oh am yeah, I... sorry. You're underneath Scott. Here you go. There you go. Okay. Got it. All right. Here we go. Here, you know what? I'll send Scott to the back so that you are actually on top of him. So if you need him, he's directly under you. Here we go. Cool. Uh, okay. Have, because, because of my magic item, I have an um, advantage. So. There you go. Okay. Um, all right. Well, first up, we have Glum. You can see two individuals that are trying to reload their crossbows quickly um, directly inside this room. Okay. Um, I'm going to, um, what type of armor do these guys have? Uh, they have splint armor, splint which armor. I believe has metal in it, if that's what you're okay. asking. Um, and, uh, and initially, no, it's not. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and um, have um, Scott move us up right up to, right up in, in the middle of them, right here. Okay, so uh, and, and Scott, the dog, goes lumbering in. And as we're, as we're moving in, um, I'm going to be shooting my hand crossbow, and every time I fire, I say, pew, pew. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and use my sharpshooter and see if that's going to hit. Okay. And... Oops, did I just X out? Sorry. To reload my character. Okay, here we go. Um, what do we got? Uh, let's see, you got a 15. 15? 15. Okay, let me 15. see. Um, for some reason, no, 15 doesn't hit it, it just whoop, sinks into the armor but doesn't seem to actually penetrate okay. uh, so, to, all the way through. Immediately after it fires, there's a bit of a shimmer and another crossbow bolt appears in place, and I fire my second shot. Nice. <laughs> 21, that, that'll hit. That hits, yeah. Are you shooting the one to the north or south? Uh, the one to the north. 18 points of damage. 18 points of damage. It sinks right under the collarbone, and he kind of uh, falls forward in pain. Okay, and I'll fire, because of my uh, crossbow expert, uh, I guess a bonus action, I get to fire one more. Nice, okay. Uh, but that'll miss. Yeah, that misses. Um, he oh. manages to deflect your crossbow out of the way, and it thung into the wall. That's it. Okay, uh, and then does Scott do anything? No, I can only make him attack as a bonus action, so for his action, he's going to dodge. Yeah, Got it. You'll... So these two um, uh, these two individuals on either side of you, they are flanking with you, so they are going to draw um, a longsword and... Oh, yeah, they just draw a longsword. Oh, yeah, and a short sword. <laughs> as they pull out a longsword and a short sword. Um, dual... Okay, so the, the first one, um, Scott can, as a reaction, impose disadvantage on one of the attackers. So okay. he will do, so for your first attack, uh, still disadvantage. Still disadvantage, okay, cool. Uh, so here we go as they start swinging with the um, swords. So this one will be at disadvantage, a nine will not hit. Um, the next one will be at advantage. That'll be even. Uh, the displacer cloak. Oh, the Displacer Cloak. Oh my god, okay. So an 11, that doesn't hit. Um, and then the Short Sword comes in. It's going to say Long Sword, but it's the same stats. Uh, an 18? No. No, okay. So Glum is <laughs> kind of shifting side to side as they're trying to hit. And then the other one on the other side goes for you, Glum. Same deal. Three attacks. 11. 21? 21 will hit, but I will um, use a reaction. And uh, he's going to... Um... It's kind of squeeze his hand really tight uh, over his uh, crossbow, and then a shield will appear, magical shield will appear, so he has a plus five um, armor class. Okay, so it'll deflect, and then the last one is a 19, which can't yes. get through the magical armor. So all those attacks miss. Taking us to Aspen. Um, I will step into the room. Uh, 5, 10, 15. Can I see them behind, like, can I see them? You can, yeah. Um, they will have, um, honestly, they would have, like, half cover. I will say half cover. The one in the north, I'll give three, three quarters cover because it's even more of a narrow gap there. But yeah. 
Okay, I will. Mm. Hmm. You know what? I'm gonna twin spell a whole person on both of them. Uh, DC 16. Okay. Hold on. Wisdom save. Uh, wis wisdom save. Yes. Okay. Um, the one to the north fails, and the one to the south fails. <laughs> so they are both the hell. They are restrained as they ah, freeze up. And I just call out to Glum. Is one of them a half elf? They look, look to both be human. No, they're filthy, ugly humans. No offense, Aize. Oh, none taken! You little shit! <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, I will just concentrate on that. Okay, uh, so that was Aspen's turn. Aize, both of the individuals in there are uh, frozen up. All right. Tristan, get behind that one. Isolde, get behind the other one. Uh, there, where is she? Hmm. There must be another exit in this room. Um, as they slither underneath, um, I guess they can, uh, with half movement, they can push through allies. Um, what's their movement speed? Uh, one sec. Uh, is it Marley? Fire snake. 20, 30 feet. 25. Oof. That is rough. I don't know how they're going to be able to actually get through because of how tight the space is. Um, uh, I just get as close as possible to them. They can they can dash through, so they won't be able to attack. They'll have to dash to. Squash. Oh no no! I don't want them to attack. I just want them to be ready. Got if it. um, if if Aspen's whole person fails, I want them ready to to mess them up. Okay, so they <laughs> slither into the room. <laughs> pushing through, uh, slithering under Scott and Aspen as they get into the room on the other side. Cool. Aize, anything else? Uh, I'm going to try to find if this room has a hidden passage. Uh, go ahead and roll a perception roll. Or investigation. Actually, I'll use investigation. I, I'm sorry, this, I'm so sorry. This would be perception because it's more of a, a scan and not like a tedious up Okay, course. then perception it is. Not as sexy as my investigation. I know, I'm sorry. Wow. 11? Uh, you don't see any hidden passageways, but you do see um, there are windows on this room, because this is like a corner room. And you can see that one of the windows is ajar, and the curtains are billowing in the wind. Hmm. Uh... No, I'm not buying it. I'm gonna investigate. Okay, uh, when it gets back to your turn, you can do so. I will, okay. All right, Glum, it is uh, your turn. So they are both restrained right now as they're uh, being held by the magic. I'm pointing my sword, my uh, my crossbow at the wounded one and I look over at Aspen kind of inquisitively. Yes, can I, why are you staring at me like that? Should I pew pew? Yeah. <laughs> pew pew pew. Okay. okay. So uh, roll with advantage. Let's go. Uh, oh. Whoa. Okay. Well, I'm doing sharpshooter, so I'm I'm going for like you know, the forehead. So miss with that one. Uh, number uh, two. It, it this the one you aim at the north has a helmet on, and you manage to hit it just at the angle that it. <laughs> Uh, 16 also doesn't hit, so it, right. it sinks into the armor again, but not strong enough to get entirely through. And last one. No. Oh my no. goodness. Uh, go. <laughs> of course I missed. And the final shot, somehow you managed to just hit the wall behind the restrained individual. Uh, <laughs> Alright, does um, Scott do anything? Uh, he can only dodge for his turn. Cool. Um, the veterans are going to try, wow, nope, they're still restrained. Uh, Aspen, you, it is your turn. Yeah, I will, uh, I will say, listen, I'm not messing around here. Where did she go? She came, she had to come through here. And you're trying like hell to protect something. So tell us what we want to know and we just might not kill you. 
Okay, <laughs> make an intimidation roll. <laughs> Uh, intimidation. Uh... <laughs> yes, I, I love it. I mean, you can't tell because they are literally just like. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Did I did I fail? I'm going to use my sorcery point to reroll again. Okay. okay. Use a sorcery point to roll again. Intimidation. Hold on. What if it's two ones in a row? Oh, that would be awesome. Thirteen. Okay. Again, it, it, they are restrained right now. They're being held by your magic, so they can't really do much. But they are sitting there, like... <clears throat> I'm so bad. <laughs> I, just, I wanna find this girl. Uh, but yeah, I will um, move out of the way okay. um, in case Aize wants to move up. Okay, is that your turn? Yeah, that's my turn. All right, Aize, you are up. <clears throat> um. Glum and um, I guess Tristan. Yeah. Um, Aspen, can you release the whole person on that fellow? This one. And Glum, don't pew pew him. Mm -hmm. So that he can respond to Aspen because you've got him held, right? Yes. All right. Uh, what she said, I'm not going to roll intimidation. All right, and needless to say, you try anything, then you're gonna get constricted, burnt, magic missile, shot, axed. Just, just don't. <laughs> okay. And yeah, I will. I will drop concentration on that one guy. Uh, okay. Um, so that one guy uh, gets released. Um, not his turn yet. Uh, Aize, are you gonna do anything else with your turn, or are you just kind of holding? Just say, where did she go? Okay. Um, before we get to him, as he's kind of recovering from that glum, do you do anything? Uh, yes, uh, I'm going to use a second level spell slot and I'm going to cast Branding Smite, which can be used on a ranged weapon. So my uh, crossbow is going to kind of glow in a kind of a fiery red. Cool. Uh, and I'll start firing at the other one. Go for it. Roll with the advantage. The one to the south. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Uh, 15. <laughs> nope. This, there we go. There 20. You go. 20. That hits, yeah. So it'll be an additional 2d6 after this. Okay. So 16 plus 2d6. Uh, 18 points. Okay. And then one more time, same guy. 21. 21 hits, yeah. For 19 points. Whew. Uh, not down, but severely injured as the bolts and one of them with uh is it like flame that comes out of the bolt oh yeah yeah the first one yeah it's basically flame and then um it doesn't matter in his case but if the person would want to turn invisible he can't now because he's glowing got it okay so um, and uh sparks and as, as i'm firing i say i was right this is going to end in a blood oath isn't it That's uh it. As it comes to the um, their turn, I'm gonna s I'm gonna do something first, and then we'll see what happens. What was your spell save? Uh, sixteen. Yeah. Uh, they cannot break free of the restraint. Um, the one to the south is still being held, and the other one um, sort of tense tense there as they they are released and looking around at the two of you um, in the room. Um, uh, he goes, What guarantee do I have that you won't kill me? Uh, you are, I, I released you and, uh, we won't attack you. You have our word. Um, Just, are you lying, Aspen? I am not lying, no. You're not lying? Okay. Um, no. can you make a persuasion roll for me? Yeah. 27. Okay. He lowers his weapons, drops them on the ground, um, and yeah, puts up his arms. Uh, I guess before we, because uh, we, we're going to go through all of you again, what are you doing with the one that's still being held? We will release your friend if you tell us what we want to know. 
and you can go on about your business. All right, what do you want to know? Where did she go? <laughs> and he points at the window with the the curtains kind of billowing. It's okay. Points at the window. How long ago did she leave? Uh, it's a couple minutes. Did she say she was going anywhere? No. Uh, she left. What's her relationship to you? I mean, she just shows up here and you're willing to lay down your lives to cover for her. She was warning us of you. And, and what do you think about women's high fashion? <laughs> is this guy Who serious? do you work for? This is, this is a serious question. Please answer the man. Answer. It's all right sometimes. To be honest, sometimes I think it's a little much. Uh, you know, like why, why, why have the, the the shoulder pad that goes all the way out to here and and pockets that don't do anything? Uh, just saying. It's a good point. The pockets thing, anyway. Sometimes, yeah. sometimes it does catch my eye. You can be yeah. trusted. But pockets should, you know. I I just feel like pockets should do something. Yeah. Um, who do you work do for? You, yes. Do you work for anyone in the city? Part of the Zentarum. Oh! So that's you where she's Karen? going. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, oh, I'm, I just looked at Aize and I'm just like, that's where she's going. I think she's... Uh, can we guess that she was Zentarum too? Yes. I would assume so, if she got agents to yeah. fire at will on us. She's gone to rot us out. Where can we find Skarin? He points at the window. <laughs> was he here? They were both here. He was, yes. And Aize, as as he says that, you kind of look and you see that resting on the like kind of mildewed little bedside um, table, there is a sending stone resting on the table. I walk over to it. It's, I check it. it. It looks like the matching pair and you see the apparatus start to like spin very, very rapidly. We had him. Um, the, uh, the, the gentleman that has his hands up. All right, you gonna let me go? I told you everything. That's up to the where captain. Are they, where are they going right now? If they have to get away, where would they go? I can't tell you that. I will, I will die if I tell you that. They will kill me. You die now if you don't tell us. And break out a pipe. I would take my my battle axe. Put this in your mouth. I like the pipe. Okay. Um. <laughs> I mean, he's gonna resist. <laughs> he yeah, kind yeah. of pulls they're back. Gonna give, they're gonna give him cancer. <laughs> <laughs> no. Nothing like that. Uh, I'll have Isolde move closer to him from behind, and she's on fire. Okay. Um, so she slithers up behind him and he starts to, uh, uh, from the heat of this fire oh, snake. Open your mouth. Come on. Um, hmm. Aize, make an intimidation roll with advantage. Me? Yeah. I mean, you're trying to, you're trying to get him to, to put this pipe in his mouth. Okay. There's one. <laughs> Actual 20. Okay. Uh, he kind of. Opens the mouth and lets you stick the pipe in. Inhale. Exhale. <laughs> That's good. The smoke starts to. I want out. you not to think about where Scarin went, and then I mind probe him. Okay. Um, go ahead and roll. Actually, no. Yeah, he's gonna roll. Uh, he'll do a resist roll. So what is what is the uh, resist? Uh, one sec. Is it wisdom? <laughs> Um, sorry, I haven't used this in a while. This is for uh, the tele telepathic probe, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, features and traits. Where's the tele? 
Awaken Spellbook, Scrumpet Mantis Mine, Feet. Tech Thoughts, okay. Um, I'm also gonna. Wisdom 16. Wisdom 16, okay. Nope, fails. Um, as you press into the mind, what you start to see burble up in the image, or sorry, in the, the head of this individual. Um, well, this is uh, Salazar's pipe, so we get a visual as well as... Yeah, the, the, the smoke starts to coalesce as well. Um, you see a, a massive warehouse starting to well up in the smoke and in the image of the mind's eye of this individual, um, and extending from the warehouse, like at the back of the warehouse, there is a, a crooked old rusty crane that extends outwards and dangling from it, um, with massive sturdy chains is a ship, a large ship that's being held aloft by this crane. Okay. Uh, I look around and uh, can I back up out of the memory to at least see the street that this warehouse is on? Um, I think that's all you get with the memory is, all right. is the image of that warehouse, yeah. I look at the ship in detail to see, make sure that I can identify it easily. Okay, uh, yeah, go ahead and do investigation for me. That will be a 21. 21, okay. Um, okay. Uh, as you look into the memory of this ship, not necessarily the smoke, because the smoke is not going to get as much detail. Um, for the rest of you, you just kind of see this, you know, vague image billowing out from the uh, from the smoke of the pipe. But you, Aize, as you're looking into the memory, as it's starting to kind of try to shift and warp with the resistance of this individual, you can see another structure starting to, to well up in the memory next to it. And it looks to be a, a large water tower. Um, and extending off of the water tower kind of haphazardly, like jer jerry-rigged to the water tower is a pipe that goes down to the deck of the ship um, and into the hold. Um, and you can also see that the ship itself, it, it actually looks to be um, uh, ironclad and has like rivets that, that run down the hull, which is very unique. Um, and in the memory, you, you get glimpses of the, the, the hull of the ship seems to almost be like slick and there's droplets, uh, like rivulets of water running off of it. I share this with, um, with, um, with Aspen and Blum. Okay. Um, as the, the individual kind of coughs away and, and, and gets the smoke out of his lungs, he, he looks and goes, Luke, <coughs> okay, I didn't say anything. Just, will, will you let me go? Ah, oh, that was terrible. I look to the captain. Let me tell you something. If we find out that you ratted us out, we're gonna find you. And trust me, it won't be good. Yeah, we'll make you smoke more tobacco. <laughs> or we'll make you listen to him. No. I wanted I wanted to start a tobacco. Listen, uh it was just a pipe drum. Listen. Mom, uh, tell them one of your jokes, please. God. Uh, uh -oh. All right. Uh, so I was walking down the street and I saw a man jumping up and down on a manhole cover. He was saying 21, 21. And I didn't think much of it, so I went on. And later on that day, I saw him and he was still jumping up and down saying 21, 21. So then I walked up to him and I said, why are you jumping up and down on that manhole cover saying 21? And he said, because it's fun, you should try it. 
And so I said, okay. And I got on top of it and I jumped and said, 21, 21. And then all of a sudden he pulled out the manhole cover and I fell in. And then he put the manhole cover back on and he said, 22, 22. 22. <laughs> that, that's dark. <laughs> This this man just groans and uh, and is shrinking can into I, the wall. Can I intimidate him? <laughs> yeah, him? make an intimidation roll. Can, can I give him guidance for that? Yes. Uh, <laughs> sure, sure, Aspen. As you tap Glum as he's telling this terrible joke. Of course, I have um, I have a uh, an eight charisma and no um, no social skills at all. But I'm going to try anyway. Amazing. Let's see what happens. Okay, so persuasion, where are you here? Persuasion, edit it. Yes. <laughs> 10 plus whatever. Um, you can roll a d4. Four. here we go. I'm not guessing this is not, not going to be enough. Please be a one. <laughs> Three. Okay, 13. Um, he's not intimidated by you, Glum. <laughs> but he, but he's, he's shrunk up against the corner. He's like, all right, please just let me let me go, let me go. And and uh, points to the other individual who still cannot break free of this whole person. I've been rolling wisdom checks, still cannot break free. Just uh, uh, trying to break free. Scott, grab that one. And Scott's going to um, go over and just clamp on one of the legs so he'll grapple it. Okay, the one <laughs> clamps down. Um, and the individual goes, look, look, I told you everything you asked, just let me go. Do you have directions to get to this place? I'm not. You, you got. You got it out of me. I didn't have to say anything. That's the best I could do. Oh, we're fine. We can find it. That's a very distinct building. All right. Oh, Go. I do have one question for him, though. Oh, I'll stop him. Do you happen to know someone named Captain Zendros? No. A red tiefling woman. I've seen red tiefling women. No. Alright, that's fine. Run along. If we see you again, we'll kill you hard and horribly. And he tries to squeeze past you all and duck out of the room if you let him. Um, his friend, eventually the minute passes and the spell releases and his friend <sighs> looking around with the Scotty dog clamped onto his leg. Um, he looks up at all of you. Me too? I look at Aspen. <laughs> Glum, let him go. <laughs> Gotti. That dog. And then he lets go. Um, and this individual uh, goes limping out of the room. And um, as he's... Same circumstances, same conditions. If we see you again, we're going to kill you horribly. As he's exiting, he kind of turns and goes... You don't know what you're getting into, friend. See, we let you go, and then you say that. We should... Mm. And he backs out of the room as he points to his forehead. Um, and he slinks out of the room. All right. Uh, so, you are left here in the room, the kind of wind billowing through the um, window, bringing in some of the cold night air. Um, and you do hear, as they go scurrying out, the footsteps of people coming upstairs, and you can see that bartender um, walking up and looking like wide-eyed, like, what, what, what the hell happened? At all of the, the, like, the two doors that have been smashed down, and, um, <laughs> and like, the, the, like, blood streaks that are going across, and kind of looks into the room where you all are. Oh, please, just leave. Ugh. <laughs> oh, I'm terribly sorry. And I hand him a gold piece. Oh, uh, <laughs> that, that helps. That doesn't cover all the damage. Could help a little more. I hand him four more gold pieces. <laughs> all right, thank you, thank you. This is good. And what did you see? Nothing. Uh, and he goes <laughs> back downstairs. All right. Uh, what do you all do? Um, we have we have about five minutes here. We're gonna we're gonna wrap up, but I just want to get a final moment here as you all stand in this this now empty room. Archive. Did you get a good shot of Glum and his 
dog. Oh, yes, I did. Oh, excellent. I am really looking forward to seeing exactly. Oh, that's <laughs> awesome. That's really great. Oh, Let me see. Hold on. Oh, my God. That's so cool looking. <laughs> oh, my God. Dude, please uh, scan that and send it to me. It's amazing. Oh, that's amazing. It's amazing. Well done, Archive. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> I heard some good views of everything going on. Yes. Um, and as Archive sort of flutters shut and you all stand here in the room, I think we're going to come to a close as we kind of track back from the room and see the broken, w or the, uh, the ajar window with the drapes sort of billowing out and we continue to track back and see the smoggy city of Thornhold sprawling out before us. Uh, all right. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. Um, we will see you next time. We'll see what happens next time. I'm excited to learn more about Glum and what Glum is up to, um, and we'll see what everyone is able to find. Uh, okay. Have a lovely evening. Hey guys. Good Bye. night. Bye. Thank you for joining us. Uh, you always have part in where is there it is okay bye oh. hi real quick one thing uh i'm gonna be out next week so we're actually gonna be taking a break next week and we'll be returning um in about two weeks so um I don't know what date that is. But anyways, we're going to be taking a little break next week, and we'll see you all in two weeks. Okay, bye! <laughs>